Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Knights of Last Call. My name is Derek Melinda, and I am super excited to be back here in the studio, joined by my two co-hosts and two channel buddies, Aaron and Bob. Uh, we are, uh, we've been kind of busy <laughs> over the holidays. Uh, everybody's been in and out. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, in fact, I barely saw you guys yeah. on just until this past Friday. Uh, yeah, this is the second time we've seen each this other. This is the second time yeah. we've seen each oh, other. I got a game in with you. Oh, we did play, That's you know, true. to be you fair. You guys are on three. The only, time, <laughs> the only time that we, yeah, we're on three. The only times we've gotten together uh, the last couple of weeks was to play Dragon Bane. Yep. And then to get together to play MCDM. Yep. So, and then to talk about it. <laughs> and to talk about it. So, again, um, happy, happy New Year to everybody and, and welcome back to the studio. And, of course, as a reminder, uh, you know, we're, we're going to try to... We're going to try to milk this thing for all it's worth um, because uh, the lease on the studio is quickly coming to an end. And um, unfortunately, the studio is very, very expensive. Um, and so right now, it looks like in a couple of months, we'll probably be packing up the studio. Not throwing it away, just packing it up until uh, such time as we can find. If you told me it thrown away, I'd probably just walk, quit. <laughs> I put so much time in these damn boards. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, it's funny that you say that because when I came in today and I was getting everything set up because, again, everything's been kind of mothballed for a month. And I was just like. Damn, we really built all this. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's it's kind of actually kind of insane, actually, that we built all this. Um, so yeah, so we're here today uh, to talk about the MCDM RPG, and of course, last during the holiday season, we had a couple tip goals, and one of the tip goals was, hey, uh, can you guys talk about MCDM? And of course, I would have been more than happy to talk about it. I am a Matt Colville patron member, so I had gotten access to it when the playtest came out, but I don't really like to. I don't know, offer a review on a game that I haven't played yet sure. myself. You know, I, yeah, I think, you like your first looks. Yeah. Then you sure. can just go through the rule book, but like actually tell you if you like or not the game. It's hard to do that without diving at least a few quick tests or something. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I, you know, I don't want to white room it, but a lot of times like these things don't really become apparent oh, yeah, yeah, roll the dice. until yeah. you get in there and actually start playing with it. That's where you, well, especially for me, that's definitely where you see some of the flaws mm -hmm. in a system is where you go, e ooh, that, yeah. that doesn't really work that well. Um, so yeah, so we're here to talk about MCDM and we're actually starting off really strong. Uh, we have a, a super chat coming from Cybersmith, uh, who says, Oh, it's been a while since I've caught a stream. Some aspects to the MCDM system seem really cool, but it's strange that it has no AC and no attack rolls. And the art still shows characters wearing armor, armor that can't stop hits. That's a great point, yeah. but there is actually an answer to that. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of get it, get in, dig into that today. Um, so uh, again, a couple of caveats before we start. Number one, this is a play test document. Number two, even the folks at MCDM have said this kind of is a snapshot of ideas from, you know, even a few months ago, right? You know, we, we've already kind of in some cases moved past this or come up with new ideas. So this is kind of a... Um, oh, they've already said that they've, they have worked out new ideas? Well, the way I like to think of it is, you know, if you were playtesting some things, you might be continuing to develop and say, hey, we're going to send these things out. Yeah, because oh, yeah, those yeah. Are like the, version like, one. Because there might be, there, hopefully, there are things internally where you go, this sucks. We're right. not going to use it. Right. This is amazing. We're all in agreement with it. Why? Why yeah. get Smith's, Smith's on writing. Get it out now. <laughs> Bob and Derek haven't even looked at it yet. <laughs> so I think I have definitely released versions before you guys have read the previous version. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's going to check out. Yeah, that absolutely checks out. So they, they wanted to kind of get a sense for it. I think also, too, they just wanted to kind of give people a chance to, to dig into the game a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, number one, the game is in flux. Number two, uh, we played a play test, right, for yeah. about three or four hours. So, a very, very. I don't want to say it's negatively, but very limited and focused playtest, meaning the game was very focused on certain aspects in the playtest. That's what they wanted you to test. Yeah. So I, right. this is not a complete game in any way. And, and it was only like a 30 page document to even read. Well, because again, <laughs> like all the systems aren't even in it yet. That's yep. my point. Yeah. Right. So uh, this is coming out 2025. Yeah. It's not even coming out this year. It's coming out yeah, next two years year. of development. You know, it's like we got an MMO or something here. I don't know, but appreciate the work there. Uh, yeah, so for, for my part, I'm going to be pretty forgiving and loose on the negatives that, that, that I've seen with it because they're probably polishing up. And, uh, you know, I want to focus and talk a little bit about, like, the play, the mechanics, the stuff that I was very excited about, the stuff I'm looking forward to seeing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things that, like, I might be concerned about in the direction that they're going, right? Not, not so much, like, I don't like this specific thing because... It could change. That's right. But more of like, ooh, if they're thinking like this, like, like, I wonder where that's going to go. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Like, yeah. so, and, and again, some of the, because here's the other thing too. I mean, 
If you haven't played it, well, uh, if you haven't played it, some of this won't make sense to you. But other if you things haven't could... played it, spoilers. I think Pumpkin is going to be running another game this weekend. Oh yes, so so you should be joining well, the Patreon yeah, and the Discord. Say, <laughs> say, that's, below. He's not talking. He's talking about random Pumpkin. That's a member of the our the Pumpkin. The, <laughs> that, that's a member of our Nights of Last Call uh, Patreon. Who, uh, we've had a lot, a couple of people running uh, oh, this yeah. play test on our uh, Discord. Which is another perk of being part yeah, of the Yeah, so there were six people that played the same night we played. Yes. And then he's running it again for maybe new people this weekend so that more people can play and test it out. We which actually, I think is crazy to do. <laughs> like we have a thread going on the Discord in our in our patron, uh, where we get into the nitty gritties of like everything. Like like if you did happen to want a line by line review, <laughs> you can uh, you, you you can join and check that out. Uh, but Bob, feel- how how do people join the patron? Well, if you look below in the in the old description, there is a link that brings you to the Patreon page, in which in which case you can sign up uh, at the I believe the lowest tier is still three to five dollars, three to five in that bucks, range. Yep. range. That will give you at least access to the Discord, and then there you can at least get access to the channels and play in the community games. It won't give you everything, but at least will get you in the door. In which case, I hope you could join us for more of the fun. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you, uh, Tyron, for a two dollar <sighs> super chat. This this super chat should be like this, yeah. This, this is this one's a- <laughs> like. So this is what we're talking about. We could what nitp- is it? <laughs> we could nitpick. Sh- shit into the ground <laughs> to be fair i feel like that's a big deal okay but i do <laughs> yeah. no, no. but i feel that tyron's super chat is totally warranted which is i still crazy that they don't have a name yet yeah. i what's well, his first super chat okay or his, oh, or his oh, first, first super, super chat, chat. Yeah. awesome well thank you tyron um i cannot believe again this is it's one of those things that doesn't matter at all but it's still unbelievable to me that you would launch what ends up being the second largest, largest rpg yeah. kickstarter backer kit uh, you know a uh, project of all time right being and only by Avatar, the last <laughs> airbender. <laughs> and your name on launch is the MCDM RPG. 4.5 million. 4.5 million. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's almost such, like, and here's the other okay, thing, I too. Got a real question. Well, you're also you. screwed. Because let's say they come up with a name for oh, it's it. Oh, there's it, no way. No one's ever no, going to no, call no, it from now name. on, I'm always calling it uh, MCDM RPG. Correct. Question for you. you got to be honest. Yes, okay. okay. On hot seat, on air. Okay, I'm on hot take, on when air. You, when you saw that. Yeah. When you saw that, how tempted were you to immediately just go to Kickstarter, throw a page up, <laughs> KLC RPG, I don't know, we'll figure it out in 2026. <laughs> Um, small, but I will say, <laughs> well, there, but not zero. There were some pa- there were some patrons who were like, "I got to get in this." They're like, "I need to just throw out an RPG too," you know, <laughs> just like random ideas. Like it again, it's incredible to me that you know there's that many people who are bought into the the you know the Matt Colville the brand. Four point five million thing is also like. That's there insane. wasn't some cheap tiers. That's our thing. Like you had to put in for like. <laughs> That's true. It was pretty expensive. You had to, you yeah. had to, like, the PDF was not cheap either. No, so just I mean, the PDF you were jumping in uh, for. You know, a, again, penny. I don't want to go off onto a, a tangent here, but I think you know you're seeing the future of this, right? Oh, yeah. Which is yeah, yeah. print is going to be. Uh, so let me just kind of, as I understand it, sort of the current problem or model with the RPG, which is this: printing costs are insane. Yep. So that means that if you want to make money on your books, you're going to have to charge an arm and a leg. Plus shipping costs, by the way. Yeah. So that means that you're going to have to really, really put a lot of money into it. So that means then that if you're in a world where, you know, traditionally you looked at the Kickstarter and it was like $60, $70 gets you, you know, the hardback and shipped to you yep. worldwide, whatever, expect delivery in three to six months. And you're like, oh, you know, and then you look at the PDF only option and it's 10 bucks, 15 bucks. You go, yeah, I'll get the hardback. Oh, you yeah. Know? Including the PDF. I right? did that for some freely stuff I probably will never play. Exactly. <laughs> but when you move the... When you move the, the the print book up to 130 or 150, suddenly everyone's going to go, oh, I'm getting the $15 PDF. But then if everybody gets the $15 PDF, how do you cover your development costs? Right. Which means now the PDFs have to be, yep. what were they, $75? Well, well, beyond that, much, I thought it was people like are like, listen, all the work's in the PDF. Why would I sell the PDF for full value? I mean, there, to be clear, there, there is something true to that. I mean, the, the, the work of the game is in the product. But the other thing is, which is crazier, is so many people today are playing online. Yeah, they don't yeah. even want the book. The, the book is it's almost, a novelty. You know, yeah. I mean, I printed my character sheet, but everything we played, I had the rules up at my computer. Yeah. We so, it. <laughs> again, it's it's just one of those situations where we're in this kind of world where this is oh, well, and, more of the norm. You know, and, and this is pretty dated info, and I don't remember. But I, I recall hearing that uh, Paizo at one point came out and was talking about how tight their margin is because their books are actually very reasonably priced. If you think about it, they are. Yeah. And and I remember there was a little bit of positive community backlash 
uh, to Paisa going, why don't you charge mm-hmm. more and, and pay your writers? And they, ha- and they, have, they have increased. You yeah. know? And that's the other thing, too, when we talk about this $4.5 million. I mean, from what I understand, you know, Matt Colville, I mean, he is literally paying two, three, four times the price per word than any other company. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Like the only other company that's probably as long on as that level write, is like Wizards of the Coast. As long as you're writing bloat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just saying like, you know, there we've heard times where, you know, freelancers for yeah. various companies, you know, uh, ha- are getting paid well, a nickel. I remember. A word, you know, you or know. even three. I think the industry average is three to five cents. We, and I've heard that Matt Colville might be paying as much as 25 cents. That's, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, I mean, he's, he's, yeah. and we've seen the art. It's definitely not AI. <laughs> it's like it's really cool. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll give you another example. Even for this play test, they went out and contracted with Jepeku, right? The people who oh, make for the maps a half a million yeah. dollars every time they release yeah. a map, and they got custom maps made. How are those maps for, for a play, play test? test. <laughs> <laughs> like that, well, this, we didn't this use adventure them. We didn't may not even maps. survive, right? Like, right? 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 I've yet to see these maps. <laughs> yeah, that is that is true. Um, well, actually, that's a really good point, Bob. They went through all that and spent all that money for something that's basically the GMs. Yep. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a good point. I, mean, I guess we can go download it now. We'd I mean, the, the other venture, thing is, too, is like, now, you know, we, now uh, we know spoilers. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and I, I know, you know, and I know that I, you know, we have talked about this a little bit about like Matt and this kind of, I don't want to call it a cult of personality that sort of surrounds Matt Colville. I mean, I've been a subscriber to his for years. And I always said this I said about 80% of his videos I like. And about 20% of the videos I go, yeah, you know, like he's he's getting a little too like um, video game designery on it, mm-hmm. you know. And you just um, don't like video games. And I, I don't like video games as much. But like he, he's a little bit more like pro scripted plot in some ways sure. than I am. So yeah. that, that's kind of probably the main way that we're different. I, I, but, and I only see the ones that people post. And but by those and large, are I mean, good. <laughs> the guy did the sweat equity of, oh, yeah. of having number one, you know, a pedigree in a creative fantasy you know, genre in the form of books and working on video game yeah. companies and stuff. Oh, he's been hustling for a long time. Then I mean, he goes and makes what, like six, seven, eight years of just banger videos on mm-hmm. YouTube for free, essentially. Yeah. And then he goes and releases a number of Kickstarter projects. That some Flea of which, Mortals book is legit. Some of which have some criticisms <laughs> about them, but I, I, I think that the most recent release, the Flea Mortals book, Flea Mortals is, is fantastic, gorgeous. Awesome. Yeah, it is fun. Legit. <laughs> and so, yeah, when you do that, like the industry is going to come out and go for literally that million Flea now. Mortals book because you showed me it, Smith. Yeah. And I was like, and then he's like, he's coming out with this Kickstarter and everyone's talking. About it. I'm like, well, if it's anything like what he's talking about, because he's but, with Flea Mortals, I'm like, I'm, I'm buying the book. That's like, there's no doubt in my mind why I backed it. And yeah. I backed it at the, the physical level. That's what I did. I, I, I've been pretty critical of uh, 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 Coville's work, his older stuff. Like, Stronghold and, and and kingdoms and all that, you know, they're they're fine mechanically. His prose, just to be blunt, just just drives me up a wall. But it's a little too casual for my too, style. Yeah, it's too casual, and no, that should come as a surprise to no one because oh, Smith likes four E. Yeah, four E is reading like a technical manual. You know, I'm like <laughs> excellent. I know exactly how to institute this process. Right. Right. Whereas like you know Colville, yeah. you know his writing will be like if you think it'd be cool. I'd say go for it. But on the other hand, if you think something a little bit more different, right. you know, if you think it a little differently, maybe you should use this table or not, whatever you see, want. See that there? It's the worst, right? Because <laughs> you know, I, I come from a developer background, so I'm like, give me the Rex, right? Like Derek goes, hey, we're going we're gonna to play this game. We're going to play test it, right? So I'm reading this play test. This is work. This is work. I'm like, I got to get a show. I got to pretend to know what I'm talking about, you know? So I'm reading this, and I'm like, just – just tell me how you want me to play your game. I don't care, how man. How does initiative work? Yeah. Just tell me, right? So, but it, Matt's like, nah, man, just just feel the vibe. Well, and, and again, it was play test, but I also think, and I think this is something that we 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 are not understanding, you know. Oh, sorry, I just want to finish that thought. All that being said, Flea Morals, phenomenal. 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 <laughs> Loved it. Uh, Shadram says more RPG rules should just be written in Python. Um, <laughs> so, um, Agreed. Yeah. Hard agree. God, that'd be hard to read. <laughs> that'd be so hard. From 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 boundary import P of two, um, but like uh, I think what we have to understand, and I don't know what I'm guessing. I, I think he had thirty thousand backers. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. That's a lot, a lot of people. people. I'm going to just from, use from our some. Yeah, I'm going to use a <laughs> random number. I'm going to somewhat educated. Yeah, I'm going to say that twenty to twenty five thousand of those thirty thousand backers. Have only ever played five E. I would think so. Oh, 100 percent. I think so. So when you're talking to people in 
these the, the language that you're reading is written for people who have probably literally never played any other role playing game sure. but this. Yeah. So there is a language, you know, breakdown. Oh, that- I, I want to be clear. I'm not actually criticizing him for this. This is subjective. This yes. is personal taste. You're correct. It, it's like, absolutely. He personal. personally pisses me. Not, <laughs> not him as a human. His writing personally pisses me off. Like other people, I'm sure love it, and that's totally great. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. Correct. Yeah. Right. It, it is very conversational. Yeah. Um. So, that being said, uh, we did get a chance to play it. Yep. And so, if you were going to play it. You might not want to hear. It. We're not going to go to the venture, are we? Yeah, no, we'll talk about anything. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if, if, it's if a you play care, test. it's it's there's spoilers, but it's a play test. It's a play test. And so. I don't even know if we could. I mean, we're really not even really spoiling because we didn't even do what we were supposed to do. Okay. <laughs> but you guys immediately took some of the things. So, um, you know, and again, like I said before, too, there may be things that come up here which are sort of nitpicky. Like, for example, something that Smith and I both noticed was that, like, the uh, what they what do they call them in? Do they call them DCs? TNs. They call them TNs. Target te- numbers. Target numbers. Test number. Right. Your difficulty class. Mm-hmm. Number. Actually, that's a good point. Could be a test number. I don't know if he actually declared it. He that. did. But did he? They, okay. they, they were kind of all over the place. They were, like yeah. there was like sometimes it felt like they were following a strict pattern, and other times you just randomly would see like a TN ten yeah. out of nowhere, and then some other times it would be TN nine, and you're like. Like th- this feels like this should have 17. this yeah. feels like this should have a little target bit. number. Yeah. So that's what you call it. Again, that is like a n- super big nitpick. Right. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. not really like and, something that is like and that's super something critical. That's obviously, it's going to get fixed and cleaned up. As, I felt like as they were easy to beat. So I really couldn't tell like if they were the, scaled right. Mm-hmm. I, I did some nerd stuff. I'm not as good as Derek because he's the data science guy, but I, I get by. <laughs> and uh, the the math is outside of combat. The math is very much in favor Okay. Of you passing. I felt that when we played. Yeah. It. And, and, you know, to be fair, Derek and I were talking about it. I don't know if, if, if that was, if it's bad or not, or let me rephrase it. I don't know if that is against the intent or not. It may be the intent. I, given was, I was thinking it was the intent. Well, because the game is written to be this, you know, big damn heroes, yeah. right? Heroes and don't so, fail. Think about like, like if, you, if you're reading what he's saying, right? You guys are her- heroic. You're cinematic, blah, blah, blah. This is not Pathfinder 2 where you roll, you know, a nine, slip it on banana peel and everyone laughs at you, right? Like, for all I know, he wrote this to be like, yeah, we do want people to succeed 90% of the time outside of combat. Because if you're not in combat, then you're doing some skill checks. You should, one, look badass, and two, keep the story moving forward. Because it's about getting back into the combat. And that second point, keep the the story moving, that's what I felt. Because it was like, you're going to come up and scale the wall. It's like, well, we failed. It's like. Okay, now what do you want to do? It's like, okay, now we got to take a step back. Well, no, okay, no, well, keep going on the, the way right. you were going to do it. But to be clear, that is what you just described has been a problem in most pass or fail D, you know, I agree. DD systems. But, That's oh, what I was wondering oh, if it was no, no, leaning no, no, low. No, no, no. What I'm saying to, is to pass. I don't know if it's a problem because his intent may be to, yeah, you should pass and just keep going. Well, if that's the case, and we'll, you know what, before we get too much yeah, further. I don't know. If that's the case, then Because that was the AP or right. the, the play test. It was hard to, is that, that's not in the rules. Like, make it easier. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. So, if that was the intention, then there's some other issues. But before we get too deep into it, let's talk about the, the, the system. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about sure, what it yeah. is. So, the Matt Colville uh, DM RPG, and I have a, I should have a, okay, this is an example of a character sheet. Okay, from the playtest. This, in this case, is a dwarf tactician. Oh, someone played and, that in ours. And we did our, our yes. buddy George, Mr. who's not, George. yeah, played the character. So a couple of things to point out. Number one, uh, sort of on the left-hand side of the, the screen, you have your characteristics going down from top to bottom. Might, agility, endurance, reason, intuition, and presence. Guess what? It's strength next con. And with charisma, yeah. they gave them new names. Now there's <laughs> every no, one of them. <laughs> there's a lot of this sort of stuff going on in here where we got it. We got to be different. Which okay, yeah. And so, and again, it uses. There's no ability scores. It just uses the modifier. Now, what is that modifier being added to? Simple. The core resolution mechanic in this game is two d six. Yep. So, number one, it's a smaller range in terms of from a d twenty, right? Instead of one to twenty, yep. it's two to twelve. There's no d twenty in it, right? Oh, no, no, I'm yes. saying. I know, but there's no D20 in this game. Not there's no D20 in this game. Yeah, as far you, as we were aware. You have two D6s, you have a number of D4s, and, and you have apparently a, D8. a couple D8s. Yeah. So do you think that's going to be an issue from the 5e crowd moving over? No, I don't. Eh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, they but, should already have their polyhedral set, so it's not too big of a deal. Right, but there, there are a couple of impl- implications about this. Though, oh, yeah. Which is you're moving from a linear progression, mm-hmm. okay, a linear distribution, a D20. A 1 is just as likely as a 20, is just as likely as an 11. 5% across the board, all numbers. 5% all numbers. Obviously, that is not true with 2D6. Right. You're going to get a lot right. of 6s, a lot of 7s, a lot of 8s. 
10, 11, 12, 2, 3, 4 are going to be very rare. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can bank, relatively speaking, that, you know, if if you have a might of three yeah. and let's say that, uh, you know, the odds of you getting a five or better on 2D6 is really good that you're going to end up, you know, with an eight or higher on a lot of your rolls. Yep. OK, but. The other thing is that this game has what Aaron was referring to as the D4s. They have this system of boons and banes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is kind of a system that we kind of originally saw with Shadows Over the Demon Lord, mm -hmm. where he, Rob Schwab, took a different approach than just advantage and disadvantage. And, of course, the, the problem, if there is one, with advantage and disadvantage is, number one, in 5e, it doesn't stack. Right. And if it did stack, it would be kind of pointless because it would be completely busted. Correct. Right. Like once you had three sources of advantage or three sources of disadvantage, your success or, or failure is pretty much guaranteed. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I mean, to the point where it didn't really come up. But I think I when we play DTX, I think I allowed double dis, a double advantage and double disadvantage, except if you had double advantage, I just said you automatically succeeded. And if you had double is, and if you had double disadvantage, I'd be like, fail. you just fail. Dragon Bane lets you stack the boons and banes, right. which is kind of wild to me. It is. Because it makes it very advantageous. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or so, disadvantageous. So in this game, um, so in Shadows of the Demon Lord, they got rid of that. And they made boons and bane dice D6. Mm -hmm. And they would add or subtract to your D20 roll. Yeah. Which meant that the boon actually, because advantage in 5th edition cannot change right. the maximum number that you can reach. Because still the highest you can roll is a 20 right. or a 19 or whatever. Right. You know, 20 is a crit. But um, so a boon adding a d6 can take you beyond that. Yep. Now, the difference is in Shadow of the Demon Lord, if you rolled a bunch of boons, you would only take the highest value of this. In this ah. game, they stack. So if you have two boons, right? then you get 2d4 added yep. to your uh, roll. Yeah. If you have two banes, you are subtracting 2d4 from your roll. So stacking them can occur. And we saw in the play test that there were times where people had two boons and two banes. Two banes, I, yeah. I don't think we ever saw three. No, but I think two is the max. I could easily saw. see that situation coming up. Yeah, I could. Um, you know, like two if, banes felt brutal. I was like, we need to get rid of that. <laughs> well, and it's interesting that you bring that up because, um, you know, two banes minus 2d4, it's one of those things where when you're talking about rolling a test number, it's pretty brutal because mm -hmm. 2d4 is minus five. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's big difference. Huge change. But in combat where you don't right. where you don't miss, all you're really doing is five less points of damage. And, and you know, this was confusing for me at first just because I feel like the, the writing wasn't very clear. Uh, but uh, there is no attack roll. Right. You just basically roll damage. Now, this is where the game is a little. So here's the thing. When you're when you're trying to do a check. Yeah. You have to make it. You, yes. You roll 2d6 plus your stack or, and stat. Then if you have any boons, you add d4s for yep. each boon. They don't like can't, you know, they do cancel without banes. Yeah. Yep. You know, so you're, you're never rolling boons and banes. You'll never roll boons and banes. But you could have three boons. Right. If you have three boons and one bane. Which that kind of stuff came up a yeah, lot. Yeah, that like, happens. Like, you'll be rolling two. Then you'll be yeah. rolling two, three yeah. minus one. But um, unlike Shadow of the Demon Lord, they they stack, so yeah. they can really add up. And yes, like I think yes, Cyber Smith. Yeah. Yes, one of the things that I actually liked about this uh, Shadows of the Demon Lord uh, is that the there was diminishing returns mm -hmm. on the buffing and the debuffing. Yeah, because after you've after you're rolling 2d6, keep the highest. Adding a third d6, keep the highest. Adding a fourth d6, keep the highest. Not well, it's really. good for people like me. But yeah. <laughs> right when you just roll absolutely crap. Right. So um, what's interesting is you are rolling this check and it's just like now there's a couple of caveats because he's trying to have his cake and eat it, too. Um, it's it's by and large, it is a binary pass fail system. Right. Mm -hmm. If you get the TN, mm -hmm. you succeed. If you get under the TN, you fail. Yep. There and, is. And that was a little surprising, right? Because if, I, you, if you look at the character sheet, right, like like it's. Obviously, PBTA, 2D6, plus a modifier, which is going to range from, in this case, 1 to 3, which is PBTA math, right? Yeah. So you're thinking, okay, like, clearly we're, we're taking this and stuck in here. And I would say one of the accepted faults, if you will, of D20 is the pass-fail. Yeah. That's, that's it. Binary. Boom. Done. Right? Um, so it was actually a little surprising not to see partial successes in here. Correct. You know? Everyone and knows fact, I'm a critic of Pathfinder too, and they have a four step. Uh, 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 well, and that's why it's interesting success. because there is like or, kind of a there's a crit. Success. There's kind of a sidebar, but there's no. But see, that's just it. The crit is different right. than the other crit. 
You're right. Yes. No, you are right. <laughs> there, there there's is a, like, types of an exceptional success. Success. Yeah, and a, there's a crit. Which you're only right. applies on attacks. That's you're, you're you are correct. Right. And so the reason why, Sorry okay. for confusing everyone. Yeah, sorry for confusing everyone. <laughs> um because here here's the problem. So <clears throat> you have two D six, you meet it, you meet it, you succeed, you fail, you fail. But the game comes in with this kind of uh extra text where it says, basically, and this is not like a head steadfast rule, it says in some cases, it, at the director, which is also, by the way, a terrible I name. I hate the name. I hate the hate name the director. Name. Director hate. means game master, dungeon master. Yeah. Ga- GM. Director. G- yeah. There is a – where it says, in some cases, if the GM feels so, warranted, if you exceed the TN by three or more, so four or more, four, yeah. then you may get some you know extra level of success. You know, what we would think of as like you know complete success, total right. success, critical success. And but then it also says for failure, and I was thinking like, okay, so if someone rolls really well, that's an opportunity for the GM to say, all right, have a little extra. Right. Then I read it's like, oh, and then I was like, I was totally expecting to see the opposite side, nope, where it would say like, and if oh, the, and if they the P- did, you know, they, they, if that would say <laughs> if the PCs fail, uh, you know, by only they miss it by one or right. they miss that's it by what two, we were thinking. That, you know, oh, you can come in and give them success with a cost. Yeah, I was totally expecting to see that. Instead, the optional rule that they give you is. Sometimes at the GM's discretion, if a player just fails, just fails, just fails, you can you can fuck them, yeah. <laughs> like, kick them while they're down, <laughs> kick them while they're down. So I thought that that was really really crazy that like the, they had this weird uh, system where it seemed like they were about to give us the sort of, I mean, because especially in a game that is cinematic, right? Because in the combat, the tactical part of it, it doesn't matter because in combat you can't fail. Yeah, I mean, you still make the occasional checks, like grapples and stuff like that. Sure. But, yeah. Yeah, but outside of combat, when you think about cinematic, there is still very much a a chance where it's like, you just roll the dice, you roll low, and nothing happens. Right. And you fail. I yeah. was shocked to see that. Yeah, I, I was too. And maybe this is one of those things where, okay, like, like let me let me try to imagine here, right? You're going, you're going from, you're, he's trying to obviously capitalize his, his 5e base into this game, right? Maybe he's slow dripping some of the stuff, right? So sure. uh, partial success, think about it. We're used to it because we've played these games forever. But, like, that's a lot of pressure for a GM who hasn't done that before. I would and agree. You've only played 5e. You're used to binaries, right? Yeah. I don't have to think about what happens if this guy fails. I just got to figure out what he has to do if he succeeds. If he fails, easy. Nothing happens, right? So that's a lot to learn. So it, I'm giving benefit of the doubt here because he should – really think about degrees of success uh maybe this was him kind of putting the idea out to be like hey what do you guys what do you guys think about this uh, is this scary right right oh you don't like it okay yeah we don't have to do that right <laughs> oh you, oh you like that right you want you want some more you want, do you want some more yeah i i just complete because and you know this is actually a, a, a props to the game um now granted we could argue people have said oh it was too easy but like the game has so t- speaking more about the game the game has healing surges. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, there. this is from 4th edition D&D. They are called recoveries, which is what they're called straight up in 13th age. And this is a way that your character can regain hit points. Yep. So they're in their way, they're like hit dice. But whereas hit dice in 5e are a relatively small number, you know, it's yeah. just D8, D6, D10. Yeah. And you get one at level one. Yeah. Instead, you start off with a pool of these of 10 to 12 recoveries. In fact, if we go over to the PDF... You can see that this uh, dwarf tactician there, it's on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, has 10 recoveries. That means 10 times per day they can heal for 33% of their hit points. That's called the healing value. So that's 20 hit points. And by the way, there are abilities in the game that let you spend recoveries Mm -hmm. more easily or with a bonus. So you're Uh, you're actually healing more. I was able to use it on a maneuver instead of an action. Right. They have a version of leaders in this that... You know, augment you should, how much you heal. You should note though, uh, or, or let the audience know yeah. that you don't you don't just die at zero. Oh yeah, well because we, we, like yeah. you're like okay, well what does it well, matter? We, well, there, yeah, there's a lot to yeah, talk we, about. We, not, lot, not at zero is like a big thing about. when you I will can say, heal thirty percent. I completely <laughs> agree with Benjamin Fraser, who said D fours are just awkward and weird, and I don't want to use them. And you know what? I completely agree with you. So I think the D four actually. Like I'm sure, I'm sure Matt's aware of uh, Shadows of Demon Lord, but I suspect that D4 may have been more influenced by Bless. Bless, maybe. Yeah, I forgot Bless. And the impact die and feels they, a lot like the Bardic Inspiration die, right? right? Isn't the Bardic Inspiration die D8? I think he can improve. Maybe it starts D8. at D6. I don't know. But, yeah, but like 
it, it, it it's so weird that like your core die mechanic is a d6 mm -hmm. and then the boon bane is a d4 it feels like a lot mm -hmm. like and and here's the other thing too d4s don't pool very well no they don't they're hard like magic missile i guess i give the benefit of the doubt because it's magic missile but by and large rolling a bunch of d4s is just never great so um someone who just played uh, 11 levels of sorcerer rolling d4s can be painful shadram says shadram says a, a d12 slash d6 in the one ring works nicely uh, yeah i could get behind mm, that give the, me the d12 because system now, well because now you have two steps mm -hmm. between the die and to the to the d plus we d4. use a d12 which is just um, so much better. on the other hand the other hand is it makes boons and banes worth a lot. Oh, yeah, you don't. You can't ignore them. You can't ignore them. If you have if you have two uh, two uh, boons, you basically all succeed. If you have two banes, uh, you're well, fail. it de it depends, right? Like if you're going for, I mean, I wanted some of my two d six rolls the other day. Like and that it, was rough. If you're going for a really hard check in yeah. the game, if you don't have any boons, then you can't succeed. Yeah, I'm talking about like your your average check. But yeah. I will say that. It does seem like it's pretty easy to get boons in the game. In yeah. fact, that's yes. what skills do in this game. Skills give you a boon. If you have a skill mm -hmm. that would apply to a check, it it doesn't like add a bonus. It just, or um, it doesn't add like a numerical bonus. Instead, it adds a boon. Yeah. And remember, these stack. So if one of your allies, yeah, as far as we can tell, infinitely. It, it, I mean, it, there's only so many sources. You oh can yeah, get yeah. It from it, but, the only yeah. thing, the only rule is if it's from the same exact thing, it doesn't stack. Yeah. So if somebody casts a spell on you and then casts that spell on you again or whatever, it doesn't buff but like you can have as many d4s as you want mm -hmm. so if, for example if bob were to give me assistance mm -hmm. that's yeah. plus d4 and i was trained in the, the thing that's another one that's a skill yeah. i'm at already at plus two d4 yeah so that's a lot you know races sometimes give you bonuses yeah, some of the i played the elf and i had a bonus to my stealth checks oh yeah that was just nice. right. so uh, i was rolling 2d4 boons naturally on stealth because you were trained in the skill mm -hmm. and your elf race or ancestry gave you a d4 right. that's yeah. just coming out the door right so it's it's very high, and then of course uh, we it's level one in the play test, but I think at level five or something in the game, uh, level uh, six, it, it turns into an impact. It turns die. into a D eight. Yeah. So that's at that point, it's bigger than the two D six. Right. Which is very weird. I don't actually like that. I don't like it either. But we only played level one, so it's really hard to see how the game is going to progress. But yes, no, I mean it just like the mechanic itself just feels clunky. I feel like if you're if you want to do that, I don't know, just add another, just add boon. two boons. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, self confessed like, what are the DCs generally? Four, seven. Um, I saw seven's easy, nine is average, moderate, 11 12 is, 12 is no, because it goes up like by two and it's then seven, three, nine, 12, it's seven, 12 nine, is 12. Hard. Throws seven, yes, yeah, so seven, nine, 12. Th that's the awkwardness that I was talking about. It doesn't go seven, yeah. ten, thirteen, it goes seven, nine, mm -hmm. and then 12. So it's a plus two right. and then a plus three. But as far as we could tell, that's that's pretty much it. And by the way, with 2d6 being the lowest you can get is a two, right? Like. A DC of four is, ba you know, a TN of four is basically auto pass. Oh yeah, for all intents and purposes. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. You know. yeah. Um, but yeah. DCs in negotiation are all over the place. I think I think it's incorrect. I I, I think it's a different build or something because yeah. you have DCs like like an easy negotiation check was like DC ten and a hard is like seventeen. Mm. Yeah, and it just seems weird. And then there's also just um, clearly attribute based DCs, you know, based off your character or whatever, where like. If like a creature tries to grapple you or something like that, that's going to be a random number in that range somewhere. Right. So clearance being modified for something. Uh, to be clear, the playtest doesn't show us how to build things. You just get the pre-built characters. You have no idea how they're built. Uh, so clearly, there's some calculation occurring that uh, affects like uh, a character's TNs for like uh, effects. You know, if I try to grapple Derek or if I try to push Bob. I have a might and supposedly some other calculation that goes into that that may give me a random TN of 11 versus, you know, 12 or 9. Right. We did have a super chat, by the way, from our friend uh, Vin, yeah. who said um, the, the, the name director is so bad. It's so cringe. Uh, I'd almost drop the system just because of that. I don't think it's enough to drop the system on completely. Especially but, on just a play test. But it, it, <laughs> it, it, it is. I don't like the name. Um, we would not be using that name at our table. Yeah, I mean, everyone's just going to call it the GM anyways. But yeah. the GM and the MCDM First, RPG. <laughs> GM was the generic name yeah. for Dungeon Master. Because well, Dungeon Master is actually copyright. But, okay. I, but I pointed out this before, you know, like, okay. you know, And we'll get into we'll get into the meat potatoes of what a lot of people want to know about. Because we've been talking about the skill resolution system, yeah. right? The 2D6. But we're going to get into the, you know, we're going to get into the, uh, the combat stuff and everything like that. But, like, my sense... Because there's a lot of things in this playtest doc, and it's only 30. Yes, Todd, you're the only one that thinks director is good. <laughs> but you keep being you. <laughs> um, the only um, – there's a lot of things in this very short playtest document that, to me, 
are good signs, things that I appreciate. Like, for example, in the playtest document, uh, to be fair, there's a lot of room for director's personal opinion. You know? if, the, if the director wants, then the failure yeah. could be catastrophic. If the director wants and you exceeded by a certain number, then it's, you yeah. know, uh, you get a critical success or whatever. Uh, extraordinary success. But there are some general principles that I think, to me, are sort of, uh, you know, should be applied universally across role-playing games. Like, for example, very clearly, he indicates that what Luke Crane termed let it ride, mm -hmm. which is the idea of, like, you make a skill check once. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. That's you good. know, and the results of that skill check should matter, yep. and they should carry forward. If you're going to go climb the tower, that doesn't mean you're going to make a climb check to move five feet and then another climb check to move five feet. And then how tall is the tower? So well, it's 100 feet. Well, okay, let's. we got a lot of climb checks in front of us. Yes, climbing functions in this game. Right. So if you make a <laughs> climb check and I say, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, you might, oh, I've got athletics. Cool, roll your boon. That die roll should be let to ride, yeah. which is to say it carries forward yeah. and gives you the success that you want. Oh, secondarily, the game also says you can't retry stuff. Right. You fail, you yeah. fail. You fail, you fail. Yeah. You're not good enough. If you fail a the knowledge check or a lore check, you don't know what it is. Yep. Um, and you can't retry, I think, until the circumstances meaningfully change or, or you gain a level. Yeah. Which yeah. is like right out classic. Right. That's very, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, you know. Old school lockpicking. Old school lockpicking. I, I very yeah. much like that. I do too. If you could spam a check and pass it, then what the hell's the point? Th Correct. That is, yeah, it's a waste of time is what it is. Right. So it's everyone's time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so again, that is, that is, and, and again, I don't know <clears throat> what the 5e audience is like, but there's a lot of people who play these games very, you know, discreetly. Mm. You know, I, well, I kick down the door. Ah, I didn't roll high enough on my strength check. Try again. I kick down the door. Make a strength check. Ah, I didn't roll high enough. Oh, try again. No, what, what I see is a lot of times is like, I kicked on the door. I failed. Uh, you kicked on the door and it just like it just circles around the group so it's like well if all four of us try okay well all four you roll and then we'll see who actually kicked on the door yeah. like, that's so what my I favorite see. version of failure would be like the ppta where i kicked down the door ah damn i rolled a six derek's like oh you kick down the door and you go flailing on the floor afterwards your ex spiraling behind all the orcs waiting to kill you yep. right now, now and the guards are in the room exciting. and they know that yeah. you're there the story <laughs> moved forward yes. yeah now, now cybersmith <laughs> makes a great point which i actually completely agree with the point is that you use up your torches your hours your rations for each check so you can only fail a certain number of times and if you are playing again i mean D D lived and died for you know two decades yeah. on this sort of attrition style game yeah. because time mattered right. and failure meant not, you know, not progression of time. Even that being said though, there were plenty of instances in classic D and D where if you failed, you didn't get to make a real try. And I should also point out right. that in classic D and D, a lot of the checks that today take six seconds yeah. took like 10 to 20 minutes yeah. in classic D and D is, is, yes. is he, in game time. Is he going off his uh, super chat that he had? Um, oh yeah, uh, he did. Okay. So, uh, one thing that turns me off a bit is calling torch tracking, etc., survival horror. But they're from OG heroic fantasy, predating survival horror. Yeah, um, it's it's actually kind of interesting that you say that. Like, I never knew. I never well, thought about a survival I blame, horror. Yeah, I, I blame that, I blame but. the OSR, and I like the OSR. Sure, but I blame the OSR. The OSR, in my personal opinion, has sort of shifted from. This core concept of oh, D and D, new OSR, but it's like now it's all about like in yeah. the grim darkness of the dungeon. The, you there know, is only when I you mean, say like, OSR, <laughs> I think about the third edition OSR. You're, you're talking about the fifth edition yeah, OSR. I'm, ta I'm talking about this OSR that is like looked at they because they're looking back now forty years yeah. to D and D, yeah. and what they see when they look at old school D and D yeah. is darkest Dark, dungeons, yeah, darkest dungeon, or yeah, dark yeah, dungeons yeah. or whatever it's called. Yeah. You know. A, cr a critical hit, yeah. mortality flashed in about an inch. Life is fleeting in the dark. Yeah. Madness seeking to overcome. <laughs> is insanity the only way forward? Like, you know, don't get me wrong. That game is fun every now and then until you get into a possible situation. And you go, well, that's it. <laughs> and they were playing that game again. Correct. <laughs> and Gabe, I am calling out Mjorkborg like that. I am 100% calling out Mjorkborg like that. Like, like, yeah, like there is this, there's this obsession with, you know, how much, you know, it's like, how much how much darker can we make our cover? All right, the name of our game is Darkest Black Midnight Edition. And the, <laughs> and, and, the, and the whole book is blacked out, and it's black text on black paper, Ooh. right? And I literally got it. And you can only see it if you shine it in the Ooh, light because it's got a little hot. bit of a, of a luminous. Like, I there's literally got a package the other day for a Kickstarter I forgot I backed. Shadow Dark. Called Shadow Dark. <laughs> Shadow, that means dark, dark. <laughs> exactly. Um, 
So, you know, but yeah, so I agree with you. I think that that has become, uh, that is be what does people now associate with heroism. But what's really funny about this game is, you know, this is a game of like, you know, coming in and and, and being heroic and right. doing all this other stuff. But yeah, yeah this, this is Marvel, the fantasy RPG. But it still has like torches and rope on your character sheet. Which yeah, we but, don't know if that meant anything. Well, well here's the thing. It kind of does it because you never run out of torches. Yeah. You never run out of rope. And the rope is 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 10 squares and the torch is like 10 squares. Well, I guess what I think is, is this. Okay, you don't want people to track minutia, right? Great. So why don't you just say adventuring supply kit? That's that, well, it we, kind of We've did. done plenty of games like that. We've yeah. done plenty of games like yeah. that. And that way you don't have to be like, well, you don't have a rope. Well, no, they, they, not on your character no, sheet. No, they basically did. But they didn't because they did write it on I know, your they sheet. they wrote rope on my sheet. Oh, yeah, in the backpack. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, the, but but in the in the play test, they go, an adventurer has every item that he needs. Right. Yes, but then they somehow also give you what you but need. But then they also write down more stuff. More yeah. stuff I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, so would, I don't know which one they're yeah, going kind of, with there. I don't, But I will say this. It is a theme, like, again, when I am playing that kind of game mm -hmm. where I want you know, I'm playing Forbidden Lands or Torchbearer or old school D&D &D oh, yeah. with a 10-minute encounter check. I want to track torches Yeah, because it's cool I mean, and it's scary and it, like, you know. I've tracked, oh, I extinguished this torch, but I still got, like, five minutes on it. Right. Like, oh, <laughs> like wow, you're, like, yeah. you're putting like it out. Like, yeah. like yeah, someone's gotta, putting gotta, out a gotta cigarette. Gotta yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel I like I have to be in the right uh, mindset to do that, but I, I, I think that's fun. I've, like, I've critically mapped and stuff like that. I like that kind of stuff when we get nitty-gritty. Right. Sure. Maybe not all the time. Right. But every once in a while, I want. And here's it. the thing, I, and this is this is my personal take. But by the way, this isn't a criticism of, of this game. We like all kinds of different games. So right. What we're saying is like this game is not trying to be like that, and that's fine. So it's weird when sometimes these elements pop up because we're like, wait, I didn't think this mattered. Right. If it didn't matter, <laughs> then why is it in the game? Like we were here to just kick ass and take names. Exactly. And oh, to be and fair, we did. And you do. That was awesome. <laughs> so okay, I know a lot of people probably want to tug into the combat, but but I think talking this game about, is combat. Well, and so well, it, what I'm getting at is this. So and and I'm not I love all of my patrons and I love all of my YouTube but, but there are a lot of people in our RPG space and including the Knights of Last Call Patreon who in my experience and I know Vin is in here and he was like yeah that sounds awesome that sounds like what I want who whose idea of what a tabletop role playing game is is the following when we're not in combat like when we're in town or we're going over the wilderness or we're exploring a ruin or a dungeon or we're talking to somebody or we're just fluffing. the. All I want is a sort of loose confederation of rules mm -hmm. that allow me to quickly set a DC and then sort of like go with the flow on it. And it's a kind of loosey goosey, but the role matters and we move forward and it doesn't really bind you to too much. You want a boon to have a boon. You want a bane take a bit. And then when we get to combat, I want that shit locked down. That's right. And I want it to be awesome. I think you're right. Okay. And I think a lot of people play their games that way. Now, again, I'm not a critical role. Um, I think a lot of people think they don't, but they do. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> oh, yeah. The people, there's a lot of people who don't, and they actually do. Yeah. But I, and again, I'm not, um, I'm not a critical role expert, but my sense is there's a lot how critical role is. Right, where they're just kind of doing whatever they want, and sometimes they roll dice or whatever like that. And then they, when they get into combat, at least maybe in the earlier seasons of Critical Role, it, it's basically a D&D &D yeah. combat. Yeah. You're rolling initiative, you have a bonus action, you have a standard action, you have a move action, and you know, you're playing the game as decided. I was going to say, and this is going to piss people off, you just described fifth edition. Right. Like, outside of combat, it's very loosey-goosey. Loosey you know? yeah. and, and sure, like compared to like, you know, Pathfinder where, you know, oh, Bob, you're next to a half wall. Uh, well, now you have a plus two cover in these circumstances, right? Like 5e still compared to like other games is crunchy in combat. Absolutely. For no other reason than, and by the way, I messed this up for a long time. I wasn't aware that cover actually had rules that like increase the number. I just thought it was like, oh, they have disadvantage. <laughs> oh, like, and 5e. Like, why, wouldn't, why does something use the <laughs> right. advantage and why does something no, not that's, use that's it? That's actually... Like, I don't say this is a positive thing about 5e. 5e is weirdly convoluted and complex in cases. Because <laughs> you're like, why wouldn't you just use advantage and disadvantage there? Now, all of a sudden, I have partial cover and, and full cover? It's like third edition just came back. Right. What the it, hell? It's literally yeah. like they just <laughs> took the third edition rules and put them into And you'll see this in 5e where it's like, which edition did they copy the rules from? Right. Which one did they want to use for this? Um, yeah, two super chats. Uh, Damien Williams with $2 says, uh, A5e, advanced fifth edition, combined it all into supply and then made it count. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm telling you now, Derek, one of these days, Damien. Damien's going to have enough and fucking donate a hundred bucks or something and be like, can you just fucking please review uh, <laughs> uh, A5E? He, he, he's been waiting for like a year now to do it. And like every time Damien talks about, it, I like go to the, the page and I'm about to buy the book and then I'm like, 
why am I buying this book? I'm not going to play this. And then I close the tab. Uh, sorry, buddy. One, one day. Sorry, buddy. Um, I, I will say this. Uh, you know, when, when we played uh, Dungeon Time Extreme, Five Torches Deep Hack, uh, we just used Supply. Yeah, supply is great. And yeah. uh, when you look at Dungeon, it just seems easy. When you look Sorry. at Dungeon World, yeah, Dungeon, uh, Root. Dungeon World has the yeah. root has this where you just have this, you know, Fabula Ultima with inventory points. Yep. Um, I, th- I think that's a nice way to it, do it's it. It's great, and you know what's so great? No, it's good for the players. Yeah, 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 scratch, scratch. It's great for the GM. Great lever. Yep. You great succeed. Lever. Mark supply. Right. I think also like it makes you feel clever too. Like if you're in a situation where like uh, I feel like if I had this in this situation, it'd be really cool. I did have this in this situation. Mm-hmm. I'm. You sort of have to like. Use your problem solving in the situation instead of going like, oh, I didn't write it down. Well, and, and think, if you're not playing the detail, like the game Derek yeah. was talking about, we're like, we are tracking literally every minute yeah, of torture. Did you have light. soap on you? Right. <laughs> we're exactly. Because yeah. we used to do that. Yes. I, and I used to make sure I had soap on me. Right. <laughs> Those if, games if are. It was fun. in the player's handbook. But if you're not playing that game, then like, why just. Uh, I like the points. So why, why beat around the no, bush? Yeah. So just like, here's, here's, here's the classic litmus test. The classic litmus test is look at you. This is more applies when you still use paper and pencil, but I guess it applies for a digital character sheet. Well, look at your like 12th or 15th level Pathfinder two character. Yeah. Okay. Who you start off being like, oh, I'm going to make my character. I'm so excited. And then you see at the top of his inventory, the whetstone and, <laughs> and the, the, the basket, seven rations the seven ra- and they haven't been touched in 13 levels of the game. Grappling hook. Like, flint. Yeah, flint and steel. <laughs> grappling <laughs> hook. Like, I have, I have bedroll four flasks of oil hooded lantern and like you wrote that shit when you yeah. made your character yeah. and then you never touched it again yeah, okay. because the game doesn't care right whereas I have played games with you where you're like all right well I don't have my lantern anymore why well we turned it into a bomb <laughs> by shoving a bunch of you know like you, yeah we had to attach it to a rope and then we used it as a, a flaming incendiary and, device if you're not building bombs in pulleys or even playing Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> that's true I mean that was for us it was a long time it was the pulley system all right we well, you, got, you got a lot of chances now to go through. You're, you're still at Vin. You're still at Vin. All right, Vin, Vin with $2, by the way, had said, Derek finally gets me heart, heart, heart. I, well, I mean. I, I get, look, I'm not trying to say that. I think M- Matt gets you. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Colville gets you. Yeah, I think, well, I think that that style of play, like. It's not bad. It's not. And you know what? It's fun. It's loosey-goosey. <laughs> uh, for me, I like, I like the game to pervade all aspects of the game. Mm-hmm. That's what I like. You know, I like for the not combat parts to be just as interesting Mm -hmm. and fun as the combat parts. I I mean, uh, the loosey goosey is fine as long as it doesn't like cheapen it. If it doesn't take away the interest in the fun. Correct. Right. It it has to work. Right. And a lot of times, if I'm being honest, I think the problem with loosey goosey is a lot of times loosey goosey is sort of a way of like pseudo soft fudging Mm -hmm. because you're like, I really want the PCs to survive here. So I'm just going to pull up some bullshit number that makes it so that they still have to roll, but it doesn't really matter. Whereas well, one of the reasons I like Powered by the Apocalypse and I like Fabula Ultima is I go, look, you can make a die roll here and you're going to climb the tower. Right. We, we all think that would be lame if you didn't climb the tower. What we're rolling to do is to see, do you have a consequence or do you have to pay a price as a result of that? Yeah. And so it's still exciting right. and it's still meaningful and it's still impactful, but this will never disrupt the game. I mean, so many people who convert from like D20 to PBTA forget that. Like... Like if you roll a six, the DM can make the GM makes a move, but you could still succeed. Yeah, it doesn't mean you I fail. Do, okay. <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah. If you watch my root game, you will see many times where somebody full fails. Yeah, and I'll be like, okay, well, you get what you want, right? But because it makes sense. <laughs> like I'm like Bob, you're right. You do convince him. It's because he's the leader of your cult. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> like, like it wasn't. He wasn't until you roll a six. You got what you wanted. You got what you wanted. You're now in. You're now in with the cult. Great. You know. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, that that that's I enjoy that because yeah. that's my way of doing. It. But um. So, so anyways, uh, we had uh, a couple other super chats here. Yep. Calderac says free market stream win. <laughs> Calderac says uh, soon, buddy. You uh, know, like once we listen, we got We got to make a couple bucks. I just want to experience. It's got. That. It's a cool. It's a new month. We got to make a couple bucks. I don't think a PDF exists for this, so I'm gonna have to like rig some sort of like top down camera oh, view. No, 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 no. No, because no. it wouldn't even matter on PDF because this thing has like tokens and little decks of cards, oh, my and gosh. The, the, it's a crazy RPG. So no, I would, you I would, have we, it. We need yeah. to take oh. the challenge. I'm one of Ten people that probably own this game. Here's the thing, Derek. Smith, do you have it, Derek? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> even I have limits, Derek. Derek, Derek's read this before, so this is not an appropriate enough challenge. We need to raise the stakes. Free play market playtest oh. win. 
<laughs> I like that it's a play test, even though the game has been out for 10 years. Well, because I'm not confident we can play it. <laughs> is it playable? It is. Maybe. I mean, Ben managed to pull off a burning wheel, which was impressive. That's right? true. He did. He did. I mean, yeah. I love burning wheel. I just didn't know it was actually a game. Right. <laughs> Um, Cybersmith coming at us with 20 bucks. Uh, what do we have from Cybersmith? It says, it occurs to me that you could get the feel of supply slash, uh, et cetera, without tracking, uh, minutia, uh, easy, every daily prep, roll a D 10. If the number is greater than the days you spent outside the town, you lose, or uh, then you can lose the GM's choice of food, water, light, rope, may. You just described forbidden lands, yeah. Cybersmith. And I think so. someone said, someone said, Cybersmith, check out forbidden lands. <laughs> Isaiah said that. Yeah. Forbidden lands. I mean, it doesn't do that exactly, yeah. but it literally uses that exact. Yep. Methodology. Oh, uh, we messed with from Damien here. Huh. Oh, we got another one for Dave. Yeah, Dave Damien Dave rose to the challenge. To be fair, Smith, says Mr. Williams, I've already super chatted over 100 from Marvel, and Derek still hasn't done shit, oh, and he owns the game. Damn. Wow. I don't have my, I don't have my, wah, 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 Yeah, you got a little called out there. I got a little called out there, yeah. yeah. Um, Sounds like you'll be running a Marvel stream soon. I love superhero games. I've just, look, I, I'm not ready to crush you like that <laughs> when, I, when I don't like the game because every Marvel based IP superhero game has sucked. And I love, I love Marvel, but they suck. I, I, yeah. Actually, I'm going to go on a limb here. Most Marvel video games also suck. We did like uh, the two Marvel um, superhero Alliance yeah, or whatever. Those Alliance. were good. Yeah. The Alliance game. Uh, I, I played a couple that I like. Yeah. So, the Alliance uh, games were good, right. but that was about it. All right. All right. You've caught up, Derek. We've caught up. So <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, we gotta, oh, okay. <laughs> roll, roll for combat. Are you going to talk oh, speak, about the combat? Speaking for a uh, roll for combat, uh, I'm going to actually bullshit a little bit more because you brought that up, Steve. So I got my uh, 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 my uh, roll for combat Kickstarter in. Oh, yeah. Uh, the new Beast Jerry. Oh, sweet. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but it you know, looks pretty sweet so far. Yeah. So I was I mean, RFC it. does a good job with their products. Yeah, yeah. It's a good book. So They do such a good job. Um, all right. So let's talk real quick here about combat. OK, combat and MCDM, a couple of things that you need to know. Well, actually, before we get to the character sheet, a couple of things that you need to know. Okay. Number one is initiative uses what I would call modified alternating actions. Popcorn isn't technically the right term. Side popcorn. It, it, yeah, because it just you go, I go. Well, in popcorn, the, tradi the, the true Ooh, version of popcorn, parental popcorn, you won't get this. You'll get this. I will. You're at a drive through. OK, you want to get popcorn. Yes. You don't have enough hands. Yes. Your children are assholes. Yes. You go first. To get the popcorn. Yes. And then your wife goes to get the remaining popcorn. Oh, that's right. Because That's like, the initiative system. Yeah, in you can only carry so much. You can only carry so much. Um, we had someone a, has to watch the kids. Someone has to watch the kids. We did have a $25 <laughs> from Ben, who was shouting out Sean, who said, I like Face Rip and Marvel Saga. And then Ben tipped $25, who said, Face Rip forever. Welcome back to the live, land of the living, Mr. Smith. He's still, you know what? This is more Not of an animated corpse. Yet. Yes, this is like, an animated corpse. We, we, have only, he, we haven't gotten around to resurrecting him yet. Yeah. The best we had was a quick animate dead, mm -hmm. just to keep him around for a little bit. He's really more gently reposed. These guys are are our champs dealing with the smell right now because um, I'm quite decomposed. I'm going to say this to Sean. Number one, Marvel. I love Saga, the system. I oh, thought yeah. it was amazing. And I, I never got a chance to play Marvel Saga. I only got to play Dragonlance Saga. I'm sure it's amazing. Face Rip is really cool because it's classic and it's ridiculous. And, um, you know, Face Wait, Rip. What they use for the dragon cards in, in the Marvel Saga? They probably villains, villains, I imagine. Yeah. Um, Face Rip is the name, the, the the nickname given to the original Mar Marvel superheroes game that came out in the 80s. Is it's that the it, arcade game? No, no. no RPG. It's RPG. Tabletop role playing game. Oh. Because it's There's called, no chance I knew this. Yeah, <laughs> it's called Face Rip because it stands for the ability score. I think it's like fighting, agility, strength, endurance, uh, reasoning. I oh, man. Remember. It's perfect. Intelligence, <laughs> perception, or something like what that. What company did that? I think TSR did it. Did, was it TSR? I think so. Um, I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, so the original Marvel <laughs> uh, superheroes. Um, I'm sure somebody in chat knows. Uh, classic. Yep, publisher TSR by Jeff Grubb. TSR. Yeah, ben, okay. Ben's confirming too. Yeah, it's basically so. So, anyways, um, it was awesome. And this is like where the classic, like, what's your strength? Galactic. Like, like that's your, that's your that. strength yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. You know, it had this like chart in the back of the book where you could be like, like Galactic is Galactus. Like you're like you're like no no he would be like Omega X thirteen oh, or something like. I mean I know they have Omega level mutants. I mean that's a thing. Yeah. I mean there are classic or there there are classes of mutants. Yeah. So, getting back initiative. Getting back to initiative. So in a, in a popcorn system, the way popcorn officially works is like after your turn is done, you pick who goes next. That's the way popcorn oh. initiative works. Which by the way means your side could you could pick your. Partner, 
you could pick your buddy, you could pick your buddy, you could pick you, you could just pick everybody on your team. But eventually, you'll run out of people on your team, so you have to pick somebody on the GM's team, and then he would pick everybody on his team, and then it goes back to you, and it's stupid. So this is alternating activation, yep. which basically means you go, I go, you go, I go. The only thing is, both sides roll a d6 at the start of the combat. Right. Whoever rolls highest, they get to go first. Yep. So, which to be fair is better than how F you did it. But then FU still won because then they just deleted it, apparently. Co yes. Uh, lastly. So uh, hats off to FU. He, he is headed out. Uh, uh, Cybersmith with the last yeah. super chat for the night. I'm going to sleep and catch the VOD. Take care, Cybersmith. Thanks, Cybersmith. Thank, you, thank you for your uh, thank you for support and thank you for your good points. I thought uh, you and I are in kind of in a lot of agreement here. Um, so uh, just level two janitor says uh, opposed D6 roll sounds like we lied to lead to a lot of annoying rerolls when you tie. Um, uh, yes. In fact, they tell you to just keep rolling until you stop tying. <laughs> Is that what it says? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Very stupid. Because here's the thing. You should just give it to one of you at that point. Well, the tie but, goes no, to the players. This is why Aaron was giving the shout out to Fabula Ultima. Mm. Because Fabula Ultima had a, you know, initiative system. And then, you know, we played it like literally once and we're like, this nope. Is, nope, this is terrible. We're not doing this. And then. Uh, sorry. FU is great. The initiative system sucked. But. The designer agreed with us. And here's the thing. <laughs> I, I didn't even really tell him that. I mean, we talked about it on, on one of our streams, and I'm sure maybe other people. He does were, watch. He does watch. And he basically got rid of the, the, the initiative yep. system. And he said, you know what? If you're fighting normal things, heroes go first. If you're fighting a villain, villain goes villain first. Goes first. Yeah, that makes correct. sense. And That's then awesome. you alternate back and forth. So appropriate for that game. So appropriate for that game. And you know what? The thing, One of the things I love the most, like, again, side tangent of Fabio Ultima here, but... One of the things I love Sorry, the most Steven, about Steven, we're not telling you. One of the things I love the most about you know Powered by the Apocalypse is now the same thing in Fabula Ultima, right? Where it's like you enter, you know, the the Grand Cathedral. There's organ music playing. There's a Latin chant going in the background, right, right. and then I Sephiroth's just descending. and then I describe how the one winged angel floats down from the the planar vortex, and I go, you know, he cackles madly. So you have come to die, and I go, everyone take forty lightning damage. Right. That was the start of the fight. Right. Because I got to go first. Yeah. I'm a villain. Right. And no I cast, loading, please and wait. And I cast Bolt two. And I just said, you, 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 take 40. 40 lightning, 40 lightning, 40 lightning. Okay, who's going next? Yeah. Like, that's the start of your fight. Yeah. Wow, that's exciting. Like, yeah. That's it's almost awesome. like no transition. Yeah, it's like no transition, yeah. right? There's no there's no difference. So anyways, that is... Um, I, I do like the non... No, math Sh ad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's just yeah. so annoying. Shadram is 100% correct. Why roll a d6 on each side? Just roll one, three or lower is GM, four, higher, well, higher. bad. And by the way, so as an example, um, stupid magic players will go high roll, and then they each roll. OK, and then whoever gets the high roll goes first. Smart magic players like my friends that we play with. One person picks up a D20 and they go even or odd. Oh, and yeah, the other yeah. person calls it. That way you're never going to have a tie. Oh, that's a good point. You just go even I or odd. I didn't think about that. Just go though. even or odd, you know. And hell, you could do that. The GM picks up a D6, goes to the player. Even or odd, mm -hmm. they go even. You roll it. If they get the even, uh, it's 50-50. <laughs> Uh, uh, Colville's old, old critical role. He's gonna pick it up and go. So how do you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> right? How do you how do you want to do this? Even or odd? Um, so then you get your into your initiative, and then you're taking your turn. Yes. All right. So what does a turn look like? Well, a couple of things. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the character sheet here. So your character has a number of abilities that are uh, uh, attacks, or in some cases, um, signature abilities, which may be an attack or may not be an attack. All the attacks in this game you'll see that they do not have an attack roll. If we look at the basic attack here at the top, the precise attack, okay? It says that it targets one creature or object and it does 2d6 plus five damage. Th there is no attack roll. I wonder what makes that attack precise. I mean, I know it's just a flavor text. But I think it's just a flavor text thing. <laughs> Yes. And they're all precise. I mean, they're all precise. That's that's actually true. Um, that's because you're heroic. So ah. basically, you cannot miss. All right? You don't miss you if you're heroic. Miss. Yeah, right. And so <laughs> it, it well, is possible to do zero damage. Is it? Yes. How? With the Bane? Banes. Oh, yeah, with, with Bane. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Because, and this is interesting. But I was rolling, a, I mean, I was the so orc, my, I was rolling a lot of I dice. I had a, I had a. <laughs> yeah, uh, big dice. <laughs> I had a, I had a suggestion, or I had a thought, which was, and then somebody said, oh, that's the way it was originally. And then they changed it for the exact reason that you said hmm. and i was like originally i was like well if you're going to do damage mm -hmm. constantly okay but to be clear this isn't as radical as you think it is okay and i'm, I'm not going to get into the math of the numbers of it but at the end of the day the combination of attack roll into a damage roll mm -hmm. is really just a series of random number generators yeah. to readily determine whether you're going to take damage or not yep you can express how much damage you take from an attack roll with a d20 
as just a function of damage. Yeah. You could just say, well, I'm not going to have an attack roll, but in, you'll do half as much damage. Mm -hmm. And assuming you had a 50% hit chance, yeah. Yeah, yeah, chance of damage. it would be the same amount of damage yeah. over a long period I was explaining that to my brother in the car ride to yeah. the airport. Yeah. So, but, but, but this is what's important. But you don't miss. It feels good. No, here's what's important. <laughs> we talk about this a lot on this channel. The feel of things. The feel. Yep. You know, um, I, 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 I've you said know, this multiple times on our Discord. Uh, RPGs is a healthy mix of art and science and art is key and art in this case is like the emotional mm -hmm. feel at the table right? right like like to derek's point about white room before like like we read the play test beforehand we had certain assumptions and, and thoughts mm -hmm. about that but that's literally half of it yeah. until you sit down yeah. and you're looking feel at your gm and, hours, sorry yeah. your director in the eye and you're looking at your you know orc uh fury buddy in the eye <laughs> and you're like you're rolling dice and trying not to get killed like you only have half the story. How does the game feel? How does it play? That's very important. Yeah, and I and I think that this is something that the, that that you know Matt Colville and his team have readily identified because what I originally was like, well, if you're going to have damage go out, you know, how do you do? Well, how do you deal with armor then? That's right. part of the game. There's no attack roll. We're tradi traditionally used to AC. So I was originally thinking armor is damage reduction, right. and which I go, it is in Dragon Bane, I, which it is in Dragon Bane. And I said, but I immediately was like, this is what I said on stream. I was like. But then you could still reduce someone's damage to zero. Right. Mm. And that still feels bad. That's like good. you wasted That's your turn. Right. Hey, I attack you for seven. Oh, he's got eight resistance. Mm. And they're like, oh, so I did I wasted nothing. my turn. I and, wasted my and turn. And to be clear, because I mentioned before you can do zero damage. Huh. This is a different feeling. Because if you're rolling and you get a lot of banes and you don't do a lot of damage or do no yeah, damage, you knew what you're, you're like, into. well, I was rolling a lot of banes. Yeah. Right. I clearly was not in a position to succeed. And you rolled the banes. You rolled the banes. It's on you. It's yes. your fault. You could have rolled ones on those banes right. instead of fours. Yep. Right? right? What Derek's talking about is you rolled, you go in, you got a good amount. You're like, yeah, I did some damage. And Derek's like, meh. Ten resistance. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then you, you know, you. That yeah, sucks. Right. And so, you know, and the, the thing I say all the time, and then people are like, I would feel fine with it. And I'm like, cool. You're awesome. You're an amazing person. I go, I, I, show me the player who would rather do in a four round combat, zero, zero, 100, zero damage. On average, you did 25 damage around. Oh, I'd love to do that. Versus. You're saying I can do 100 damage once every four rounds instead numbers of go zero, boom. right? Every all four rounds. Or, you know, you do 20 to 30, 20 to 30, 20 to 30, 20 to 30. The average of those two it's, is 25 Yeah, of those two scenarios. Reading it, I would have said probably the first one. Exactly. But playing it, man, well, does it feel well, nice to do Well, I was joking, time. the first one, well, because I, I just do zero, 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 zero. <laughs> So, so this game's perfect for you. It is. Because you can't, I always you can't miss. It. Except it's not, because I'm like, yeah. I mean, actually, I like Derek's point when we played. Uh, after, after we got on playing, Derek made a point about his being the director, the, uh, the GM. And he was saying he liked playing the monsters because they had something to do during the turn. It wasn't like a, a poof waste of a turn. Like these monsters oh, sure. are supposed yeah. to be impactful. And then they they well, also chuck the roll and then it's it's a waste. This, this was That's like a, a, what a, what a terrible round. Um, <laughs> With, with with Derek, right? And, and like you really notice this in PF2. PF2, you know, the monsters have favorable math for them. Mm -hmm. If you're fighting an on-level monster, the, mo the monster has a mathematical advantage over your, your PC. That's how the game works, right? But it's not huge. Like, it's it's like typically one to two. Right? Well, you also typically outnumber them two to one. Uh, well, yeah, no, no, I'm just, yeah, exactly, right? Like, that's how the game works. But my point is, is like, you know, Derek could still miss on like an eight or nine, right? And yeah. if he's going up against like a, a Crusader or something like that, it's it's even, or, I don't remember, I haven't played Pathfinder 2 in like six months. But like, uh, he can, uh, uh, still miss, right? And so imagine the scene Derek yeah. was describing before, right? The one-winged angel descends. You will meet your end. Woof. <laughs> Misses. Next, all right. Well, you Whoa. all go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 so, it's so lame. And well, it's, it, good. it's when you, I, I thought it was, I thought it was nice. I thought I liked that comment that you made that like, it felt like you could do something every turn and it was, it was going to be a, a, impactful. Whether it was a lot of damage or not, that's different. Right. But it, you were going to do something. Well, there's a, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Okay. Because the the thing about it is, and and this is know, a big it, thing it, for know, a game. It is. And I see Beowulf <laughs> saying like, I'd prefer zero 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 one hundred over 25, 25, 25. I don't know. About I don't. That. I, I mean, I don't know. Beowulf. I believe you, but I also don't. And I'll tell you why. Because it, this is a gambler's fallacy, right? Everybody looks at the ceiling because they sure. think, what about what if I hit for hundred well, twice? I, yeah. Yeah, what if um, you don't? What if you just zero 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 zero? I, and I have a different feel actually with this. And this was this is one that you're gonna have to stretch back in your memory for a distant, distant long time ago when you were a different person. Uh for me, it felt 
a little video gamey, specifically like MMO ish, where like in an MMO, you never pay attention to your basic attack, you know, like you're always just doing damage. Sure. Right. For, you know, if you're playing an MMO, you never miss. In, in most modern MMOs, right? Sure. It's all about the big boom that you're going to do. Oh, I get to use my five minute cooldown, you know, or whatever, right? That. So for me, my concern is, yeah, it felt, it felt good when we played it. How does it feel after the 10th session? Sure. Right. Cause you know, we're, we're relatively smart people, more or less. We, we know what's going on here. Okay. I'm hitting, I'm doing damage, but like, so, so are, are you saying that you think it might feel like samey and boring? Um, because like at least in the other one you have a chance of missing, but so it's exciting when you hit, and now well, you don't have the excitement anymore. That wouldn't be the word I would use. There is that. There yeah. is that, but it's more of <sighs> yeah. Trying to what what makes it exciting and keeps it exciting over time. Right. Because here's the thing. There are penalties in the game. There mm-hmm. are there are good plays and bad plays. So this is reflected in the damage. Right. Sometimes you might do 25 points of damage mm-hmm. and other times you might do nine. Right. So my concern, this is all theoretical because we've only literally played it once. Right. And this is about feeling. So I don't know how I would feel. But like, will I start to feel, oh, man, I didn't do I didn't do at least 15 damage. It's basically a miss. Mm-hmm. Like, will that happen? Mm-hmm. Right. Will will I. Uh, uh, will, will I have the excitement of, oh, that was like a good hit. I got yeah. in and I rolled high and I well, hit, right? Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's an expectation or, or something Is it just like, there? okay, I walk over and I do my damage, right. and really it's, this is just about us doing enough rounds to to burn it down. Well, I, yeah, I, that's a, that's, I, it's well, a, that's so a that, weird thing to think so that, about. I mean, yeah. that gets to the tactical element of the game. Yeah. Because, so we can talk about a little bit about that because you do hit with all of your attacks. But every character has better attacks. That do more effects or right. do more damage. Yeah, you have your right? signature your, moves. Your, 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 your character, character had yeah. an assassinate ability. Yeah, right? that was which, his heroic, which attack. did a ton of damage. Yeah. Okay, so the 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 core part of the game is balancing on your turn. You have a maneuver, which is your uh, movement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, but the game also lets you do a lot of other things with maneuvers. Mm-hmm. You can help your ally with your basically your move action. You can hinder an enemy and give yeah. them a bane. With a move action. And these these are nice. There's no checks. There's you no rolls. It. it just yeah. happens. It just does it. And then your action is typically going to be your big thing. Yeah. An attack often, but not necessarily. Yeah. Um, and as a result. Well, they also have hinder in here. Did you mention hinder? I did. Okay, good. Just um, checking. And as a result like of that, and, and then other type of actions are free. Opening a door, yeah. uh, uh, drawing your weapons, yeah. you know, th- all that stuff that would cost you an action or two actions or three actions of Pathfinder 2 yeah. is free here. Yeah. Because um, you only, there's no bonus action, there's no third action. You just get maneuver. Right. No, there's no minor and there's no like Which free is kind of 5e, minor, right? Yeah. You got your action and your move. Well, no, because 5e has a bonus action. <sighs> 5e yeah. has a bonus action. 5e but also not has everyone a, has a bonus called? action but at yeah, level I mean, one. We don't know what they're going to do later on. I mean, right? they're not. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 5e also has a, uh, what's called an interact action and you get one of those for free. And so a lot of like what what Coville is putting in a maneuver, it's called free maneuver actions. Actually, right, it used to be like your free interact. Got it. Okay. And five. Okay. But long story short, in Matt Colville DM RPG, your character could totally draw their sword, move open, throw open a door, walk through it, and then strike an enemy. Hundred percent. Because that would be a series of free maneuvers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the maneuver being to move. Yeah. The free maneuver being the drawing your sword, yeah. kicking open the you know walking through the door, and then attacking the enemy. And this, if I'm not mistaken, has the mo- moving like. Um a uh, five year where you break your movement up. I don't remember if I if I saw that in here. Um, I don't. I, don't I didn't. Think so. I don't remember so. seeing it. So it's more like Pathfinder. Your action is move. Yes. Okay. You choose like if you're going well, you to you you use first. your terms very carefully because maneuver and action are different things in Sorry, this game. You use your maneuver to move, but you can't break that up. Correct. Right. So in five E, you could. Or you yes. can break it up. Yes. So that is one thing that's a little different. That's more like Pathfinder. Right. But see, in in five E, um, also though, like. You you get like multiple attacks and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm just saying really it's a little different. It. I'm just wondering in my head about the five E crowd playing this. Well, Pumpkin yeah, says there, you can there, split up movement. There you are can? powers. See, I, I couldn't. There, I didn't remember I didn't seeing see it. That. Yeah, um, there are powers that let you do that. I know that because yeah. I had one. Yep, Orion saying that you can break up your move. Okay, so okay. I just have to find it in here. I, I must have missed it. Okay, so um, 
Yeah, so... Uh, oh, we didn't have to worry about it. We just ran in intact. <laughs> so, you know, Beowulf says all those times where it's down the line and you need to hit to save the day and everyone's holding their breath and you either hit and cheer or miss and everyone's heart sings, that's gone. Beowulf, what if it's, we need 10 damage I, to I kill out. this creature to, to, to save the day and then someone rolls <gasps> and they roll eight damage and your heart sinks and every, you know, you cheer everyone, or you hit 11 damage and everyone cheers. It's literally, I can't not stress this enough, it's literally the same thing. Yeah, I, actually, this. so what they're doing here, by the way, um, with, with how things like armor works and hit... It's actually the same thing that 5e kind of does with Bounded Accuracy. It's also something that Pathfinder 2 does with specific uh, uh, villains in that you can take a point of armor class and convert that into a HP amount. And so in 5e, Bounded Accuracy, your math is limited. Like your proficiency gets to plus six. Your attribute might get to maybe five or six. And like typically, like you don't have a lot of other modifiers going in. Your math is very small. So you, you take a third edition Baylor that had like, I don't know, armor class of in the 30s or whatever, and you plop it a 5e, now he's got an armor class of 19. Mm -hmm. Like you could roll at level one and hit the Baylor. Yeah, right? he's got to pump his HP up. Exactly. That's how they do it, right? Yep. Because they're kind of doing something similar to this, right? Where it's like, well, we want to feel progression. Mm -hmm. Misses sucks because missing feels like zero progression. So instead, what if it was really trivial to hit and you just progress against hit points? Colville here is being even more efficient, cutting out the middleman. Let's get rid of the check, just progress against the hit points, mm -hmm. right? Pathfinder 2, you'll notice occasionally that there's some creatures who have really low armor class. Well, check their hit points, right? On the flip side, some creatures are going to have really high armor class, so they're going to have additional defenses like Incorpor or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Check their hit points. They're going to be lower, right, than another creature you, that level. Did, and I guess I, I, we were talking about field 2 in the combat. Um, did you feel like it went faster then too? Like it felt faster because there's no checking. It felt fast to me. I mean, it was like you just roll hit. It Boom. was literally half as many damage rolls. Yeah, you know, it felt. And then, it like felt I said, and very then, and fast. I said, and then, now again, I was like, we have three people, so I don't really know. Now, like, how. and from a feel perspective, again, I, I sit. I'm sitting in the GM seat. Yeah. yeah. Say, right? Director seat. So uh, I'm saying normally in the dream. <laughs> Please direct your right. uh, And I don't care what all of you hardcore D and D players say. I see it in your faces. When you get your turn finally and you roll a miss, you are dejected. You are you are like, why am I sitting here tonight and this playing? That's the only this reason game? I come to play. You to know. be dejected? Uh to, to hit. So when yeah. I don't, oh, right. so I'm and, 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 you know, and reasonably so. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh yeah, I get yeah. that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now uh now I'll be the first to admit that you know, they're talking about the game is tactical. It is. It's not as tactical as fourth edition no. or Pathfinder second edition. Yeah. Because those games, you really have to like, you know, plot out your yeah, turn we didn't see in any advance. Flanking or anything in yeah, this. like the positioning, the movement is not as important. Um, the the fact that you can move around easily, that all these actions are free maneuvers, mm -hmm. um, basically means you know the game is kind of like yeah, you very know, generous with shifts. You're very generous with like yeah, shifting is very generous. It's not five foot square; it's half your speed. Yeah. So like, if your speed is eight squares a turn, you can shift. Four squares, aka shift four squares. There's a lot of stuff. Also, the the um, what was it called? Uh, go back to the character sheet. What's the um, what's the thing you can do on your turn? Ta triggered action. That felt pretty cool. That's the one oh, thing. Oh yes, yeah. this is cool. So, so so I felt like I was always doing something. So we're in PF two. I play my turn, and then unless I have a reaction, I kind of just yeah. sit there. Triggered action. I feel like I was doing well, so, something all the time. So let's talk a couple of things. There was so much going on. Let's take a look at the character sheet for starters. Up near the top, you can see that uh, there's a box kind of by itself called Chance Hit. Mm. This is this game's version of Attack of Opportunity. Okay, but there's no attack roll. Now, you'll notice that Chance Hit, it doesn't do 2d6 plus 5 damage like some of the other things. It's just d4 plus 5. And a lot of the other characters did like d4 plus 3, d4 something plus like, 2. Like that, right? This is like the kind of fightery, yeah. you know, defender character in a way. Yeah. Basically... The this, game this is, is like a warlord. The game kinda. is really, really simply and easy compared to, let's say you're playing a traditional D20 game. So number one, it's not like Pathfinder 2 where it's like, oh, only some people have attack of opportunity. Right. No, this is more like 5th edition or 4th yeah, edition everyone. where everybody has an opportunity action or an attack of opportunity. And you can do it as many times right. on people's turn. It doesn't take up your reaction. It's just a quick hit. And here's the cool part. Let's say I've got a, you know, a, a monster and it's, it's engaged with Smith, and it runs away from Smith. It passes by Derek, and then it goes over to Bob. Guess what? Wow. Aaron and I just we just roll our D fours. Yeah. That it takes that damage, and and we're moving on to the yeah. rest of the turn. No attack. You just do there's it. no attack. You just take the damage, and you're just you're into it. And it makes it threatening, and it makes it feel threatening because it can't miss. Right. And so you know that damage is going to add up. So like the idea of like, oh, I'm going to go plow through this, you know group of four or five guys it's like okay that's expensive unless you're gonna roll they got that boon on them 
And that's what I did. Remember, I ran into that fray. Yeah. You, you, Bane. Oh, Bane. Sorry. <laughs> Bob's Unless they bad got that Bane on them. Bane. Yeah. Um, because I remember that there, there was that one time I ran in and we had first thought, oh, the, you're going to take a bunch of chance hits. And then George reminded us, actually, that guy has a Bane on him and then he can't use his uh, chance hits. Right. So and that game. was actually pretty cool. So, so knowing and putting that hinder on him yes. or, or weakening him. That character like can then allow you to make better movements. Around I do the like that there. role. That was not yeah. bad. That was a nice right because you can kind of turn off an enemy's yes. um, chance, chance hits, chance hits yeah. by making it by giving them a bane right. yep. on their mm -hmm. attack. So that's the first thing, chance hits. But the other thing is, and these are just first level characters, so you know, you may end up with more of them. Every character had a triggered action, and yeah. this is very similar to your Pathfinder Second Edition reaction. The only difference is, as far as we can tell by the rules, it resets at the top of the combat round. So yes, like it's not your you, turn. You get it's not on your, based on your turn; it's just based off of the entire and round. And that's because yes. your turn, going back to you go, I go, doesn't mean that you you could go first this round, but then I'll go first in the next round because it makes tactical decision. Right. Which actually, I did like. Uh, we there was a couple times where I'm like, actually, this I don't have the boost this time. I didn't have enough rage for my orc fury, and I was like, right. you go in this time first because I'm not going in for a big swing. Like yeah. I'll sit back a sec, you know. And I, I like that aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every class had a triggered action, and again, it's free to use. And quite frankly, uh, it made you feel very active. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was. I had to pay so attention the whole time. As an example of this, this is so. This is the war. Uh, the tactician, kind of like a fighter warlord, and they have an ability called parry. And the trigger is a creature makes a weapon attack against you. So it can't be like a spell and or an ally within your reach. So, you know, it, it, think about the feel of this. Yeah. You can defend yourself. You can also defend any of your allies nearby. Very cool. How so? They take half damage. And that's automatic. Right. That is never going to leave. That's never going to fa fail you. Right. And I got to be honest. very 4E? Is that like a 4E no. type thing? Okay, I didn't no. know. Because let me let me let's let's actually I know he takes a lot from 4E. Let's so actually let's actually compare this. This is actually a really good comparison. Uh we can't see it, but it's on this sh uh, sheet here. The uh the tactician in the signature abilities box all the way on the right-hand side has an ability called taunt. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, that thing was brutal. <laughs> <Taunt>. Okay. <laughs> now, this is a free maneuver, but you can only do it once per round. In other words, it doesn't take up your maneuver or your action, right. you basically get to do this for free once per round, right. okay? Now, what does taunt do? Well, it taunts them. And what does taunt do? Well, taunt gives an enemy two banes, okay? That's minus 2d4. Right. If they attack anyone other than you, and they can't move away from you, okay? Yes. So, so if you're engaged with that enemy, they can't leave you to go attack somebody right. else. But if your ally was mm -hmm. next to you, he could attack that ally at minus two. At bane. minus two with minus two d four, minus yeah. two banes. Mm -hmm. But this is why I really want to talk about this game and why I personally think that this is very satisfying. Because I'm going to use fourth edition, a game that I love, and I'm going to talk about a very similar ability in fourth edition called the mark. Yep. Okay, which is what a fighter can do. Yep. They can put a mark on a creature, and what a mark does is it gives a minus two penalty to attack rolls on a d twenty for any attack that doesn't target the person who gave the marking. In other words, if you don't attack me, the fighter, you'll have a minus two penalty to your attack roll, okay? Yeah, that's Here, significant. It is significant. <laughs> but, 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 is but here's the deal. <laughs> On the d20 roll, 45% of the rolls would have missed anyways. Right. 45% of the rolls are going to hit even though you marked them. That's true. Only 10%, only one in 10 times that you mark somebody, will it make a difference. You will go, I'm going to help him out. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to protect my wizard buddy. I'm going to mark the enemy. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. And I go, yeah, yep. I'm going to attack the wizard anyways. Oh, I rolled an 18. Everything you did did nothing. You did not protect your ally. And I I have seen this in players. That's interesting, before. Yeah. Players, yeah. in my experience, who aren't like super selfish, you know, dicks, they don't care if like they get destroyed. But like when they feel like they've let the team down, mm -hmm. it's a bad feeling. It is a horrible yeah. feeling. Yeah. The thing about this taunt that you have to realize it's is always it, effective. It will always be minus two d four, which means brutal. it is which, mitigating damage. It, it is will, damage mitigation. There, I mean, you yes, the character could roll two ones, but but either way, it will never fail. Its success rate. Well, like for example, when I talked about the mark being a minus two penalty, how often does that make a difference? 10% of the time. How often will this taunt make a difference? 100% of the time. That 
is very different when you're talking yeah. about combats yeah. that are three to five rounds long. That's it's a really way different feel. feeling. It's a way, way different, different, different yeah. feeling. Yeah. And, and, I guess for sure. I mean, I know you taunted George back after he taunted you, so yeah. it was a weird like, uh, dynamic. But how did it feel for you knowing that we were running around and you you were like, I have to basically attack George here. It's like, no, I don't. It. That's the best part about it. Oh, you didn't have to, but you really shouldn't go attack well, someone else. No, actually, that's kind of what I really like about it is because, yes, like, because it's just straight damage, mm -hmm. right? I, I could totally attack George and not, you know, t attack the tactician, the person who taunted me, and not lose out on five to six damage. But if this enemy does 13 points of damage, I can still totally use it against you or oh, for Smith, sure. And I'll, I, instead of doing 13 damage, I might only end up doing six damage because I did less because of the Banes. But it's not like my villain's turn was wasted. Right. It's like, yeah. wow, I got to do damage to the target I wanted to do. And this person feels cool because... They, they cut the damage in half. Right. And, you know, that person yeah, it's is... it's like a win-win around. It's like a win-win-win. Yeah. And so I think... I was that, wondering how you felt about it, because I, I I didn't get taunted, so it was, I couldn't you speak know? on it. I mean, I mean, the classic example of it in, like, a D&D &D game is, like, where you set up the mega thing. You set up the flank, and I cast, you know, fear, and they're frightened, too. Right. And then I'm going to age you, and you do all the thing, and then the person rolls a, a, a two. Yeah. I think yeah. it happened to us once in our AV game. We had like a net six difference. We still like rolled. Yeah, and there's two. like that moment of like it feels like a car crash. Yeah, you're like, well. you're like <laughs> like everyone's looking around at each other, like, are we are we really gonna let this happen? Yeah, it's a bad feeling. It's a horrible yeah. feeling. Yeah. So um it, 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 and you when that happens, so, it's it's like the air someone sucks the air out of the it's room. Like, yeah, they say, um, he's like, Do we have any rerolls? No, it's like uh, uh so what do we do? Right. <laughs> similar I guess nothing. Yeah. I guess similar I'll, feeling. You miss completely. But I want to talk about because yeah, uh, Gabe also a good point. You do all that work and then they roll a net twenty. Or like oh, that or, or yeah. even worse. You're like, guys, mega 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 move on the boss. I'm gonna debuff him this way, I'm gonna buff your AC. You go in and you hit him with Okay, you knocked him prone. He's prone on the ground, minus two. You hit him with the crushing rune. He's got two points of um, enfeebled, so he's at minus four to hit. I'm giving you a plus two bonus to your AC and this. And then you're like, ah, yeah, the monster will attack from the ground. Not 20! And, right, they're like, right. and then, like, the guy's dead. Right. And actually, I want to talk about that. Okay. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the other place where I really like the feeling in this game. Going back to triggered actions, right? So... Uh, casually in our group, I refer to these triggered actions specifically as like an act of defense because the three that we had, I don't know if it's like this for everything or how this is going to play out, but all the triggered actions we had were all uh, defensive in nature. Yes. And no, no, Bob's is not. Bob's, no, but hmm. I mean, sort of. Bob's sort of defense. I'll get to Mine Bob's. Mine was Bob's a, cool. ally. That's about as defensive as a barbarian's going to get. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. But specifically, the triggered off of you got attacked. Right. Um, going into this, I was like, uh, Derek hates uh, uh, missing. I, I've always missed. I've had terrible luck since <laughs> I was like a kid. Uh, for me, I hate getting hit, right? Because um, my sure. role, I expect to fail because I'm terrible. But, you know, there's nothing I can do to defend myself, right? So I'll, I'll have these characters. We'll be playing third edition, and I'll have like a level two paladin who's got like a 26 armor class because like I just go in hard. All my feats, all my Tower gold, shield, full yeah. plate. Because I'm just like, I just, just leave me the fuck alone, man. I just want to hang out with my bros. Why you got to come after my shit, man, right? Like in contrast, Derek likes to make his smite paladins, but me, I'm just like, nope, I'm going to turtle up you know, and just, you know, I'll, I'll heal and bless my allies, You do right? seem to have the highest AC almost every time we play. Right, because I don't like to get hit, right? <laughs> so I'm going into this game. We're like, well, shit, I'm going to get hit all the time. Yep. Derek's just going to, like, take my ass behind the prom and right to the dumpster, you know, as one does with their prom date. Oh. Uh, so when I started looking at the triggered actions and how we all had them, how they did, and then we started playing them, that was really cool. In fact, that was even better because now – yeah, you can get out of hit all the time. But at least for me, I don't know how you guys felt, but like the game gave me enough tools where Derek was coming around, he's going to fuck with me. And I was like, no, you're not, son. I got my actions. And it wasn't a freebie because like I would have to make sure that I had the movement, that I was within mm -hmm. the right range, you know, all that stuff that I could move out. But like there were a couple of times where Derek come in with some big hit and I'd be right on the edge of that ability. And I was like, nope, I'm going to figure what's called. I'm going to shadow step out. Reduce it by half, and by the way, if I go outside your range, I get to reduce it by another D6 plus three, which sometimes you were teleporting all over the all over the. Combat. I took yeah. three points of damage the entire fight, whereas George, 
George, yeah, well, dead. George, <laughs> George refused. George was the trying to die. He was the yeah, tank. George, yes. Yeah, we but he was tank. also he was also he trying to tank. die. Yeah. George um, had five rounds. He could have healed. It was like, yeah. <laughs> you don't just lose ninety hit points. Yes, sixty. But, George, um, well, no, because I, I mean, okay, at that point, yes, he oh. he couldn't make a recovery. He does say correct. He does say correct. But, um, <laughs> so so I will say this. Um, you know, Kendall says it's not as tactical as I was expecting. It is not as tactical as four E yeah. or. PF2. PF2. It's definitely not. It's definitely not. Um, but get, again, going back to the PDF, because this is something I really want to highlight here. And also to remember, guys, this is a view at level one. Right. This is level one. The thing about this game is you have, and we haven't really touched on this, because we've talked about the signature abilities. We've talked about the triggered actions, which are really cool. And everybody has one, so it makes you feel like you're active. But the thing in the lower right-hand corner is really important here. These are called your heroic abilities. Mm -hmm. And heroic abilities are, quite frankly, you know, they're like daily powers from fourth edition or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, really big, awesome once a day type abilities from a lot of other type of games. But the deal is in this game, if you look at those heroic abilities, they have a cost. OK. Yeah. Yep. And the cost is from your heroic resource, which is different. You know, uh, from each class. It, is, it was quite the mind thing okay. to think about. And mm. each class mm -hmm. accumulates these heroic resources throughout the game. Now, if you've watched this channel before, you know that I have talked at length about tension curves in combat. Mm -hmm. The idea that oftentimes the first round of combat is the most exciting for the party members because they get to use all their coolest, biggest, baddest spells, their best daily powers, and they just nuke the enemy. Yeah, yeah. And right. because they're unloading their biggest hits, yeah. you probably take an enemy or two out, which means that now the fight is a joke. And so the tension caps oh, and peaks yeah, kind of. at level at the first round of combat, which means right. every round of combat after that is kind of a slog. The way that these heroic resources are set up, your character cannot use their cool ability right. at the start of the fight. Instead, you have to take certain tactical actions in line with your character's class and role, which will allow you to accumulate resources to then spend them to do the big cool thing. If As you guys have played an MMO, this <laughs> is the rogue from like World of Warcraft. Yeah, World of Warcraft. You build up your tokens and then you cash in your tokens. Right. Now, how were the other characters? Uh, did you start Fair combat similar. with resources or no? No. Me, so, no. So I did. No, right. you did not. E you, you I yeah. equal to the number of victory. <laughs> Everybody has every time. That. That's what I was asking. Yes, because yeah. I was you like, get your victories. So yeah, so yeah. everyone got the victory resources. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you could yeah. do well, something big in the well, okay. if you have enough victory. We're, we're getting off onto okay. a separate tangent here because <laughs> yeah. if you look at this character sheet on the left hand side, you'll see a box is called victories. So every time you get a victory, you beat a major encounter, a do combat heroic. encounter, something yeah. heroic. You do a trap. You get a victory point. Yeah, these are similar to milestones from. Okay. Victory. As these accumulate. Eventually, your character will go back to town or go back to camp and rest for, you know, 12 hours, the long rest. Right. And when that happens, you erase all of your victories. They go back down to zero. Right. But you turn, you convert each of them into an experience point. Yep. This is how you level up. Right. That's cool. But, that's cool. But while you are playing the game, every time you start a new encounter, you start with an amount of heroic resource equal to your amount of victories. So the longer you push that day. So the right. longer you go through. Now, again. The, the, the re, what they are trying to accomplish here, okay, this is neither tactical, it is cinematic. <laughs> yes. yes. When you watch a movie, Avengers, Die Hard, the character gets their ass beat yeah. all day. Yeah. They're bleeding. They've got glass in their feet. They, they've been worn down. Their equipment's busted. In any... The way this works in the real world is after you get your ass kicked, you're at your worst. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But in a movie, what happens? Cap tightens the yeah. straps on his shield. And somehow. Well, which movie? Okay. And somehow <laughs> he is now at the top of his game. That's right. Right. The, the, the Even hero. Though Thanos has never been hurt. The hero <laughs> who has been getting just destroyed the entire movie somehow is at his strongest. You know, she's at her strongest right at the end of the movie. That is what this system is trying to yep. encapsulate because what ends up happening as the day goes longer and you keep fighting encounters, you'll note that what is going – the only thing holding you back from going forever is your recoveries. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right? These work like healing surges. You'll note there's only 10 of these. There's only 30. And this is the defender. Okay? Other people have less. Here's the thing. As far as we can tell, you – like 4th edition, it's really hard to heal – a character unless they are using a recovery. Yes. Um, 
Potions heal you for a flat rate. I really feel like that's a typo. Yeah, I feel be. like it's going to use a recovery. Yeah. So this is like fourth edition where you can't just infinitely heal someone. Right. Even yeah. if you have magic, cure light wounds or whatever, they this person can only be healed so much during the day. If you want to have 10 victories, you're going to have to play really well. Right. And so the idea is if you get into a combat and you're doing and you're, you're playing smart, and you're making good choices. You're using your triggered actions to avoid the really high damaging effects and maybe, you know, not taking unnecessary attacks and you're working together to kill the monsters quickly, then you are going to take less hit point damage, which means you're going to have to spend less recoveries to heal back up to full, mm -hmm. which means you're going to be able to go longer and yep. go longer. But as you go longer and longer, you're going to be running out of recovery. So you're going to you're not you're not going to have much left in the tank, but you might have four or five or six victories, which means when you start that next combat. You start with five or six of these resources, which means that your character can start off the fight. Doing things more heroic. Doing the right. badass, <laughs> awesome end of the movie type thing, right? Whereas earlier in the day, you don't start that on round one because you're starting with zero resource. You've got to, the barbarian has to build up their rage. The, I the, really like that. The shadow has to, you know, concentrate their doom or whatever their, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, the, the, I don't the, the tacticians is called focus. Insi no, not insight. Um, the tacticians is called focus. I thought it was insight. I thought was it was insight. Been. It might so. have been. Maybe it was insight. Yeah, mine was rage. Yeah, and and the tacticians is insight or a focus. So as the tactician uses their signature abilities like positioning strike or seize the opening, they are going to accumulate more and more and more focus. They also, this particular class also just gets one each round. So they get one for free right. and then they get uh, one if they use one of these other abilities. So there's sort of a... I a felt like that was the most tactical part was me balancing, do I spend my resources? Do I use a healing surge? Do I get in and just make a basic attack right. or one of my my other... Uh, Your signatures. Yeah, my signature yeah, attack. Because right. I kept thinking like... <laughs> I'm getting hit every round. This isn't like he's going to have a chance to miss me. I'm like, I need to heal like now. Right. So I can't use my heroic ability this turn. Okay. If I can, if I can do a couple things here, maybe I'll roll really well for the, 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 the rage one was a random die roll uh, to build up rage. I was like, okay, if I get enough here, I can, then I can move in and actually do something really cool. But maybe I shouldn't cash in. Do I assist this round? That's where it kind of came into. Yeah. I, I think I, playing with those resources is really fun. So that's is, this is important because even though all these classes have heroic resources and they're all token based, that's not to say they play the same. Yeah. Because Bob's approach was very different than mine. Mine was a rotation. You had a you had a pretty well because you're you, so you immediately sussed out. You're like, how do I maximize how much insight do I gain per round? Okay, I use that ability with that ability with this ability. I'm just gonna do that on a cycle. Yeah, you yep. were like you were like just pumping up the resources <laughs> yeah, every round. Uh, I, I mean, it took me three rounds. It, it takes me three rounds to build up what I need for an assassinate. Then you assassinate, and then you spend three rounds. Yep. And then you know, in an emergency, you spend the three action ability instead of the five action ability to get an extra turn. Yeah. Uh, Pumpkin says the only thing that this means, the only lame thing is this means that you know the boss. I well, wonder if that, well, if that it's, would it's, happen. It's not even the Nova the boss. The problem that, that I see is that you potentially have the opposite of the 10 minute work day, right? The 10 minute work day is the idea that like the characters come in with their best spells, their highest dailies. Sure. They go in, yeah. they fight something, they use all their powers, and then they get out and they rest and they sleep. This is where the characters go, all right, we're going to go defeat the boss. But wait, but first, we got to roam around this dungeon first right. and go fight other We got to do all the side quests. We well, guys like Vin are going to love it, we right? Completionists. <laughs> we got to do all the side quests so that we can build up enough victories. Yeah. That way we can go in with seven resources yeah. and then kick ass. So, oh, geez. I mean, we did think about, like, we knew we were getting into the boss I mean, area. We were like, do imagine, we have enough victories to fight this? Now, imagine this scenario, though, right? Like, like here, new DM nightmare. Sorry, director nightmare, right? We're like, all right, Bob. And let's pretend George. Here. George. No, George. Right. Yeah, Tim. Tim. <laughs> all right. Oh. We, we got the whole. We got the whole group. Right. Okay. Um, we gotta go fight this boss. So obviously, that means we need to farm this level of the dungeon first to get our victories. Right. Yes. We go in there and like not like, trivial fights, like strong fights, yeah, heroic yeah. fights. Yes. Yeah. But we get in there, right? Yeah. And you know, Derek's being Derek, right? He's like, ah, you, you sons of bitches, right? And and you know, George is George, right? Uh and that means nothing to anybody, but all right. George is crazy and chaotic. He, you don't know what he's going to do. He, 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 he got his defender killed. You don't even know what he's going to do. You don't even know. He doesn't know what he's going to do. Sometimes he literally rolls, right, uh, to figure out what he's going to do. So we get in there. We're like five victories in, and someone screws up, right? And, and they're like, they have to spend like all their recoveries to heal up. And we're like, damn it. We already farmed this level for the boss, <sighs> Derek. Is there a, another dungeon nearby <laughs> that we can then go and farm? 
to, to get all of our victory so that we can then come here and fight the boss. Right. right. But, and, and, but no, but this raises an interesting point. That's not the way this game is designed. Um, this game is very much designed, I think, in a fairly linear fashion that is supposed to be kind of like, you know, played through and a series of set encounters. Yep. You know, and when I say set, I mean like set piece encounters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And potentially getting into the, the, the complex math and the balance of the, the game, it would not surprise me to learn that the game is sort of balanced around the idea of like, well, we're expecting you to go into this fight with four or five victories. Right. In order for it to be yeah, balanced. I was, we were wondering that at the end. You're you like, know? do we have enough? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> well, because we haven't talked about it yet, but on the character sheet there at the top, you have victory benefits, and these are very powerful. Oh, that was Mine were weird, but but the first one was amazing for the Orc right. Fury. The right. Immunity Three, yeah, no, that's that's not your victory benefits. That's your rage benefits. Oh, so that was oh, that was not yeah. victory. Oh, victory benefits. benefits. These are your I passive effects like, you get for victory. Correct, you're right. Yeah. I, I like my resource benefits. Like that was really yeah. strong. But so, yeah, your victory benefits. That was like your once a day type it, thing. Once an encounter. Once an encounter type things. Yeah, yeah uh, some of those were mine. Were I had one that was pretty strong. Oh, mine were mine are just passive. I think you're oh, right. mine, oh. I can only use one so of the So victory other. benefits right here, right? Yeah. Like, these are things, like, for the conduit, it adds to the healing. Uh, for, I don't remember the name of my class. It was, like, a shadow thief. Uh, it just added a flat bonus to how far I could teleport. Mine added a flat bonus for one-time hitting. Yeah. And it was, like, okay. once per encounter. So, But I could do two and things. And it was for your victory benefits? Yes. Interesting. But my rage benefits was, like, at rage three, which is, again, that balance. Like, I was like, if I use my rage up, now you I had. Can't. You had a passive mod, a passive bonus on your rage. heroic resource. Correct. And that yeah, felt super that's strong. True. Yeah, I, I, I didn't had, have that. I had immunity yeah. three at rage three. Yeah. Where all of a sudden now I'm taking less damage. Felt amazing. But then I meant, do I cash in? Yeah. So for you, it's a big choice. I was really balancing that. That's the My points aspect. were worthless other yeah. than what I wanted to do with them. So the only choice I had yeah. to make was, do I want an extra turn or do I want to do insane damage? Right. right. And you know what? I could see a world where they should actually try to... Uh, they would try to include that because, you know, like, for example, imagine that your, your character, Smith's character had like a speed of like nine squares. Mm -hmm. Imagine if your speed was like five, right? Right. It's low. But for each point of insight that you have, you get plus one to your speed. Yeah, that's cool. And now you've got five or six insights. Especially you, so you're jumping so around. So you're moving yeah. at speed 11, yeah. 11 squares. Yeah. I, do I cash, I cash in? that in? Yeah. Right. That, so that's I, a good I like the I like having the counterplay yeah. of the passive bonus for building up or the cool thing to cash in. Can we also just norm normalize squares back again? Because I'm super happy with no, that. No, we're moving to two meters, Bob. Uh, the, the two meters in Dragon Bane drives me crazy. But like move one square. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Your movement's five five squares. I'm like, yeah. So, it feels so good. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think I think really at the end of the day, you know, this is what people say what do you is, want to talk about uh um, going to zero HP. I mean, there's a. Do you want to just talk about like all 30 pages of the, the no, game? No, just the, I think that that matters when you talk about healing surges and stuff like that. Yeah, because so it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it, it felt weird that you didn't die at zero. If there's any fans of Guild Wars 2, you'll like this piece. Uh, we we just got a fifty dollar oh. tip oh, from Jason, Jason B. B. Who could it possibly be? See, by the way, right there. All you people who go, oh, I bet Smith is just Jason B. I don't even have a computer today. He doesn't have a computer or a phone. Well, his phone's somewhere. I just I'm, don't I'm, see it. My phone's down here. Right? Yeah, yeah. All right. You can go back through the footage. I didn't have it out. <laughs> Jason B says, there's nothing more tactical, cinematic, and fantastic than rolling a nat one after getting a plus two circumstance bonus, <laughs> plus five status bonus, and plus four proficiency bonus. Uh, and... Uh, Absolutely not. I mean, that is that is the definition you, of cinematic me. fantasy. Oh, um, you know, speaking of cinematic tactical maneuvers. Oh, yes, right. I don't even know where I put them. Yeah, oh, here we go. By the way, for those, for patrons, look what we got in today, folks. That's right. It's hard to see. It is the cinematic I can walk up to the tactical maneuver, that sticker. We are going to be having these, uh, we're going to be having these out uh, for the, uh, for the patrons available soon. Oh, oh that's really horrible. It's but, so bright and blinded. So bright and blinded out. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah there's, there's no Lights. light. <laughs> can't win. You can't win. Anyways, uh, uh, cinematic tactical maneuver. Um, there it is, right there, right there. there. Yeah. That's right. Um, Excellent. It's it's more of a Patreon inside joke thing, but yeah. it is it's amazing. Um, and I'm gonna be giving you guys some stickers. Um, more stickers for the laptop. Here, I feel like I need to get another laptop just like I have stickers on. Here is Bob's what, intimidating over here. He, sweet a stickers. lot of people. A lot of people were talking about. Uh, a lot of people. Sean says he was Jason B. 
I thought he was Mike, Mike T. T. Yeah, I he's thought, Mike <laughs> T. Who, you can't be this can't be Wait, everybody. Is Jason B. <laughs> Mike the T. ass prince? This makes so much sense. Actually, kind of does. The, see, right. these people just don't know. Yeah, you got to join us at uh, Origins next year. Yeah, if you're a Scott, uh, Stephen knows. Yeah, Stephen knows. If you're, if you're at Origins game, Jim Scott next year, knows. You got you to come find us. Um, Mike <laughs> T. Jim says, Scott, I'm, right there. Mike, Mike T. says, "I'm Mike T." No, Mike T. There's a different Mike T. Yeah, um, it's a different Mike T. <laughs> um, if you're at Origins this year or in 2024, maybe, come, make sure you come join our, our fiasco game. Um, Hopefully, I'll make it this time. Um, <laughs> Too many margaritas. The margaritas got me. Those are the strongest Yule. margaritas I ever had. The strong, destroyed. absolutely just, just the. They were delicious, and but that, they hit me hard. They, not I, as hard as you. I got destroyed. But anyways, um, let me talk about something that gets talked about a lot. Yes. Because here's the thing about tactical. Okay. Again, we just discussed how some people are like, this doesn't feel very tactical. It doesn't feel very tactical in the sense that you're going to be pixel bitching over every single square that you stand in. Right. Where it does feel tactical is that you're going to have these choices about a building up a resource. Do I want to do things that are going to let me use the resource? Am I going to do the things that are going to let me spend the resource? How do I want to move, right? And where do I want to be positioned? Yes, that was the tactical. Because the fact that you can use your move action, your maneuver, to do other things in the game is important. Yeah. Bob also mentioned this earlier, kind of went unnoticed. In this game, when you spend one of your recoveries... You can do that in combat. It takes your action, which generally means you're not going to be attacking. But when you do that, you recover 33% of your hit points, right? That's a big number. That's a big number, which means that your character can, you know, if you're like getting low, the, the choice might be for you to fall back this round and spend a recovery. Especially knowing that they're going to hit. And, 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 and you know you're going to take damage. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you can go, well, I'll be fine. And then the problem is when people make that, they say that. But they're expecting not to get hit. Right. And then they do get hit, and then they're really hurt about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're really upset about it because they were like, oh, I thought I was just hoping I'd get missed. What? Okay. And then instead you're crit and you're unconscious. And it's like, why didn't you heal? Oh, I was thinking they might miss and I'd get everything I ever wanted. You know, have my cake and eat it too. Not have to waste no. my turn and I have to do this. It's like but, the opposite of gambler's yeah. fallacy. Right. It's the opposite of the gambler's fallacy. <laughs> you think I'm never going to lose. So, um, but so the game is very rewarding. But the other thing about the game is, you know, it, it, it it's about making. There's practical limitations to tabletop role-playing games. Even unless you're playing the most simplistic basic game, it is going to take 10 to 15 minutes to get around a table with, you know, three or four people yep. and a GM with a bunch of monsters, okay? And as a result of that, when it, your turn comes around, there's a possibility that you'll miss, essentially do nothing, and then your next turn comes around in 15 minutes, which means that in the past 30 minutes, you have done nothing. You've contributed nothing. That's really, really tough to buy into. Yeah, especially and, if you're playing for like three hours. Right. So it's a, it's a high percentage of things. So, mm -hmm. so tactical uh, TTRPGs have to face the facts that they have to come up with a new way to sort of engage on that level because otherwise people are just going to get bored and they're going to leave because some of these – a lot of the mechanics that people just hold up as gospel came from a game – where combat rounds were sometimes two to three minutes long. Right. I mean, I'm talking about the entire way around the table. Right. Okay? Like, we talk about, like, in Fabula Ultima, it's a little weird because it's Final Fantasy based, that you still have to roll the hit, even though, like, in but a round of uh, Fab Fabula Ultima going around the entire table oh. might take five minutes. Yep. It's right. so fast. Right. So, yeah, I missed. I did nothing. But, oh, it's my turn again already. Yeah. Wow, cool. You know? Yeah, like, like, it can be, it can be that quick. But I if felt you, it was If fast you're going to have this. a tactical game, tactical games usually mean you're making more choices, you're taking longer, you're having to decide where to stand on this grid so that, you know, you, you're looking well, at what squares. And it came up in this game, but choosing who goes next. Yeah, absolutely. There was at least a minute per yeah. Yeah. side. Right. So, you know, for uh, obviously Derek knew what he was doing, but like, you know, we'd all sit there every time it was one of our turns and be like, uh, are you, are you, it was like Spider-Man meme. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody was like, are you, are you but, doing and, it? But that doesn't happen in regular D20 initiative system. Well, it does with this delay. Well, yeah. Should I delay? Should I, delay? Should, I, yeah. should I go after you? Should, yeah. Who wants to go first? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot. So of that. The, I felt like it was normal. But uh, what ends up happening in this game is on your turn, you are going to do something. Yes. You are going to either, you're going to make, you might use your action and hit. You might use your action and recover and regain not a trivial amount of hit points, a huge 33% chunk of yeah, your hit points. This isn't a uh, you you healing potion roll and then like, Ooh. I rolled a one. Yeah. You, know? you might. 
you might attack somebody, do a bunch of damage, and then use a free maneuver to taunt another character. And now that monster is guaranteed to get two banes to attack anyone else. Right. You have you will have done something, and then during the 15 minutes or whatever you're waiting for your turnaround, an opportunity comes up where you can parry the blow on your ally or on yourself, and now you're taking half damage. <laughs> this actually reminds me of a funny little comment you made. Uh, Mr. Bob over here uh, found out that he could not just go off and paint minis because he had to actually pay attention when it wasn't his turn. Right. Yeah. Right, like, because you're sitting there looking for, you know, in the in the case of Bob, you're the triggered free. actions and the um, chance hit. Like, there's a lot of things going on when it's not your turn. Yeah. Let alone, there was some positioning because I needed to know if my triggered action was if an ally got hit and the monster was in reach of me, then I could strike the monster. So you it wasn't just be, me. Like, you right. have to watch the grid. Yeah. So you need to make sure you're like I'm standing by an ally yep. and by a monster yep. because that way I can get my free hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And the same thing you saw there with the tactician with the parry, they can use it against themselves, but they could also use it against their ally mm -hmm. to, to have their damage. And by the way, you can also see that you can spend one of your focus points to make it even more damage reduction. Right. That one, Pret that one I think got me. That one was like, you could spend an extra rage to do an extra D four damage. And I was like, Oh yeah. And I roll it and I'm like two or three. I'm like, was that worth it? I don't know. Was it worth it? Because I keep that rage it, up, keeps my immunity up. And I, mean, I was like, I don't really think I should have been spending it like wow, that. You, you mean you don't want to do as much damage because you you <sighs> want to defend yourself? <sighs> What is like this? Who are whole, you? Defending so, myself was defending the group. So one of the things, so Bob has been wanting me to talk about the death. Uh, dying. Yeah, but I thought the, it was, it was, so, was mind-blowing so to me. What, one of the themes that I'm trying to impress upon you is that the game is doing everything it can do to keep you not only engaged, yep. but it's, it's trying to keep you an active participant in the game. Yeah. You're not going to have a turn and miss and do nothing. During when it's not your turn, you're going to have a triggered action to maybe negate a ton of damage, maybe on you, maybe on your ally, or maybe do some extra points of damage if you're Bob. But the game continues this pattern with when you go to zero hit points, you are not unconscious. Right. There is no death saving throws in this game. Right. When you go to zero hit points, your character continues to function. The only difference is you become unstable. Unbalanced. I'm sorry. Unbalanced. Thank yes. you, John. We're already unstable. <laughs> you die at negative 50% of your hit points. Yep. Okay. Once you become unbalanced... You can continue to take your actions. However, anytime you basically attack or do something demanding physically, yeah. this, is, this is hurting action, George. Yeah. You will attack take, or physical skill checks. Yeah, physical skill checks, an attack or a triggered action. You can assist, you can hinder. You, you take can, yeah. five points of damage, which is obviously going to hasten you towards negative 50%. You right? also could not use your healing surge. But you cannot use recovery. Which, once, you get which to, hurt. <laughs> once you get to zero hit points, your character can no longer take the recover action and get back that 33 percent of your hit points at that point you are beholden now the, the play test rules didn't actually include any like rules for first aid that we could find so once somebody got to unless zero, you had a healing potion unless you had a healing potion or you had access to like a character like conduit. the yeah. cleric which is called the conduit who could allow someone else to spend a recovery um you seemed like you were shit out of luck but the long and the short of it is your character continues to function yeah. but if you want to be aggressive and attacking well, then that's a short fuse. Yep. And it's like, oh, and then what happens? Oh, then you fall unconscious? No. no then you just, then die. You just you die. die. So <laughs> unconscious which I did is like. not cinematic. I, I agree. It isn't. <laughs> it is. I'm going to take a nap now. I mean, the, I mean, how often, the only time in movies. I liked it, though. The only time in movies that you see a character basically unconscious and bleeding out to death is like after the fight is over. He's wearing a red shirt. And Tony Stark is sitting there. <laughs> no, those people just die instantly. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Sorry. Like, you don't usually see people just like down and bleeding to death, you know? Uh, Lord of the Rings, troll battle. A uh, couple of the fellowship gets knocked out. But, 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 a good, a good, but Lord of the Rings is a great comparison. Boromir. Oh, yeah. Boromir. Yeah. Boromir was unbalanced. It was Boromir, like, I'm going to keep going. Right. Boromir <laughs> was clearly unbalanced. He gets hit with the arrow. He is now it's below zero yeah. hit points. And you think he's done. Right. And then the orcs are charging in and he goes, Wah! and he starts still attacking. Yeah. Five, 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 five. Yeah. And he keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And then from cinematic purposes, you know, he he's dead. Yeah. But he has enough to go, my brother, my captain, my king. And then he dies. Yeah. Because, you know, the idea that your character is just going to like fall unconscious and just lay there and, and bleed out Slow to death. Out, yeah. What was that? My, my, did you see my mic? It just, yeah, it, it just, just gave it up. It just gave up. <laughs> so what's interesting about this and, is... And, and so I thought, like, George did that. George George got unbalanced. He was playing the, the Dwarven Tactician. And I was like, I'm going ham. 
And yeah. he just kept putting pressure. And he like three more rounds at least. Yeah. He was effective. I mean, yeah. he, and to and be fair, he, he was taunting still. Like, come be, on, yeah. he, he, kill me. He was even saying to us, like, do you think I should do something this round? Oh, I'm just gonna go in and hit him. Yeah. I'm, do I use my action effectively to damage the boss, or do you want me to assist or hinder right. or something like now, that? And, and and so it's an interesting comparison because you could go to zero and instead yeah you play it easy play it safe yeah I'm and, back and, up uh, 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 I'll take some helping actions or yeah. some hindering actions I'll do some support style actions that don't actually cost me any damage or you could play it out but then you're playing to the hilt you're going to death yeah. right. so the end result of it is I mean obviously your now, character dies you're out but the, the long and the short of it is you are never not playing the game and that as a GM yeah. you know and I and as being a very critical person who's like observing players during the game, it is fantastic when everybody gets to keep playing and yeah. nobody feels like I did nothing and I didn't contribute anything. I let my team down. Oh, I did all this cool work and then it didn't matter anyways. Um, when that happens, you know, it, it's 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 demoralized. At first, I thought the math was kind of weird like there where I was like zero HP is death. Like, I don't understand how I'm still functioning, but I, I kind of liked it because I, I thought I, I understand what they're trying to do. And kind of push you to your extreme here, past the breaking point. Um, and I was like, how do you think about, how do you do that cleanly with the math? Zero is a nice clean number. Yeah. When I get to zero, I know, boom, this triggers. I am now unbalanced and now the clock's ticking and I'm in, I'm in rough shape. I yeah. need to figure out how to do it. And, I, and the more I thought about it, I actually liked it playing it. And I think I liked it when I thought about it after. But when I read it, I was like, that seems wonky. I actually think playing it felt better than reading it. It, it, it actually... Does Derek, are you in love? Hit, hit. RFC thinks you're in love with this game. No, not really. No, <laughs> <laughs> Steve's just Steve's just baiting. That's what he's got to do. If if he's not baiting with his thumbnails, he's Frosty just says, baiting with Bob, his comments. Bob, they make they make blue pills to fix your mic issue. <laughs> 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 so we're at um, we're at we're Frosty. Frosty, I'll see you next mo on Monday. Uh, Carell says, couldn't the tactician just use inspiring strike to heal themselves? I don't know. Um, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, ask George. Uh, so it says a hero within five squares can expend a recovery. I don't know if I don't remember if we knew that. If a uh, if... hero does count for both. Oh, does it count for both? Yeah, because okay. I was talking about how you have hero, yeah. you have you, you have ally. Got ally it. is different than hero. Okay. Yeah. Got so it. yeah, George could have healed them. Apparently, uh, it, it costs something though. Yeah, like, it costs three focus or something. Oh, I think Frosty got modded out in the in the stream for saying oh, that. But it's up on the, on our chat. <laughs> it might be auto modded. <laughs> yeah. In George's defense, he didn't read the rules because he showed up and was like, "What are we doing?" <laughs> that is true. So George um, may not have known the specific details of hero versus. And we ally. did have a super chat and a tip, Derek. Oh, did we? Uh, Save versus uh, says it feels yes. weird that combat is never fail, always progressing, but everything else can feel like. Uh, womp womp. Like, can I combat this lock? <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of funny. No, that 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 actually is a really. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like what we were talking about, right? Which is like, you know, like, uh, you know, it's like, it's weird that like outside of combat you can't you can fail, and it's right. kind of normal, like you know, but black get, and white failure, and then you get into combat, and suddenly it's not. Now, here's why. Again, outside of any sort of plot cinematic purposes. Outside of combat, you're typically not waiting 15 minutes to get your turn again. True. You can just try. Well, you, you can't know? try again, but you can do something else. So, you know, and again, like I said, the game feels like it, again, has like this really rough kind of shoddy kind of system for, deal. you know, nothing spectacular. Roll 2d6, add your mod, beat a DC. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's not the end of the world. But it's very loose and goosey and add a boon, add a bane, you know, if it's something's hard and yeah. or you have an advantage or you have a skill and, you know, let it ride, maybe. Uh, give you a critical bonus if you, if you roll more than three. Maybe. You know, failure means nothing, or it could mean something. Maybe yeah. it's very loosey goosey, and then you get into the combat. And again, I think that this is just amplifying the way that people actually play the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like this is a design intent, and I'm sure you'll tighten up a little bit and get more polished. But like, they're probably going for like a yeah, whatever, and then combat's like yeah, right. And we also had a, uh, a tip from uh, Battle Cry fans. <laughs> I saw oh, Battle Cry fan, we still have those. <laughs> <laughs> Cinematic tactical dwarf tossing. Actually, we were, we were very we were very keen. The dwarf character does get pushed one less square. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to say though, at first I thought you guys were joking when you guys said that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what they did in fourth edition. Yeah, yeah. Before you think. So my my main thing about this is, I will say this: I did think the combat felt 
cinematic. Yes. And what cinematic means to me is this. There are a lot of times, and now maybe it's a combination of what the the powers did. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a combination of how those powers felt. Maybe it was a combination of what it did to the movement grid. But there's a lot of times in D20 where you take an action and it has a mechanical effect, but it triggers nothing in my brain. I would agree. Right? It doesn't look like anything it's in called, my brain. It's called strike. Well, it's <laughs> map attack. <laughs> map attack is obviously. I mean, some horrible. of these were like just like, obviously anything Bob has ever done is horrible. Well, Correct. I just thought even this. I had like <laughs> world across win, the board whirlwind attack for like I think it was like three rage or whatever it was. Right. I ran in and swirled around and got. The, I, I felt like I, I I felt very. I felt like what you've talked about in four E when you described four E, like what I was using an encounter to do. I was right. like, oh, this I'm going to go in right away and do something really cool and attack that felt really cool. I'm raging, it felt really awesome. Yeah, but it's not just about the awesomeness for me. It's about the visual. Oh, yeah, you know, like so when I think about Aaron's character, fair, 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 sorry, right? Like his character would literally like dart in and like a bit, like oh, vanish into yeah, a cloud of you smoke. You also described it really well, like night crawlers. No, that, it's just, called, no that's what the description was. was. Well, you guys also gave me the nice visual of night crawling, well, no, poofing because, in no, his smoke. That's that's what the power was doing. Yeah. yeah. And then he it could nice. hide in his own cloud of smoke, attack somebody, and then when I would attack him, he had the ability, and you know, he's moving his mon mini you know on the battle mat. to. That's his reaction. So it was and then so if he's well, out of way, he takes less damage, and so it's like it. You it, it creates. I was doing the thing. It sat, created. Yeah. It created so well that when I drove my brother to the airport, I was telling him about that specific ability. I was like, <laughs> I was like, you remember Nightcrawler? He was like, yeah. I'm like, he was like jumping in his own shadow mist and like stabbing and ducking. I was like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah. That was great. I'm not gonna lie, it was but, awesome. But that, you, but when you describe it like that, it is yeah. very visual, right. very engaging, right? Yeah. And so that's where I think the cinematic part works well. Is that the the triggered abilities and the actions give you a visual sense of this larger than life, uh, dramatic, cinematic moment? Most of the abilities felt like they were leaning towards that yeah. and pushing towards. We that. got multiple people asking if you if I if I could run up a sword in MCDM because it's cinematic. I believe Derek did say because it's instant. MCDM RPG, Bob, you can in fact run up a sword. He right. did say something along the lines. I, I didn't know if I should like write that down. <laughs> yeah, no, this this is anime high fantasy power. Right. I'll be like, okay, but you get a bane. Yeah. Because you know that's a terrible idea. <laughs> um we can do it. Bob's Bob and you succeed. Bob running swords 2024. Um now the other thing is. Uh, again, this is this is to your style or not, mm -hmm. but the the names of the powers, which admittedly are are probably in flux and are, will change. Oh, of course, you know, positioning strike, seize the opening, you know, inspiring attack. You know, you had you had some like um, in all this confusion, which yes. let you like disappear. Yeah, you know, um, so the which confused me every time you said it. <laughs> you said I forget what you said one of them, and you kept saying it. And I was like, what is he doing? Is he saying the name of the ability or just telling us yeah, something? Aaron was being very trollish by yeah, being yeah. like. <laughs> In all of this confusion, yeah, you're doing something like that, but but that's literally what it's said to say in the playtest. No, no, not even the character sheet in the book, it references that power. I'm like, and you should say it like in all this confusion as a wink to the power, right? I mean, it just gives you a nod, like when you read the power, like world one tech, yeah. what are you doing? World one attacking, right. seems pretty so. Pretty so, having that little bit, but it's but it's not like this weird move flavor text combination right. you know it's just creating a cinematic visual and so while i may not have found the combat to be the most tactical thing we've ever done i did find it to have a, a, a high level for a grid-based game yeah i thought it delivered a not quite as good as a theater of the mind game by it might have done mm -hmm. but i was surprised to find like you bob that i could maintain that sort of a you know uh Visualization. I could almost play it back the, the fight in my head, I don't know, right? it, which it, is pretty it, impressive because I don't can't do that for many of the fights we've done. Right. <laughs> it, it made sense to me because this is obviously inspired by 4E. And, and, and the reason the reason say like this kind of works with this or 4E and it doesn't really work in a PF2 is the additive nature of how they write the powers versus the restrictive nature of how they write the powers in, in, in PF2, right? PF2, you get this power, it's going to do something, right? And then you read all the things that are telling you what you can't do with it, right? Or, you know, it'll be like, behold, you are the master of flame. You get a plus one to fire damage. <laughs> you know, like, like you're like, well, okay, that doesn't feel like anything, right? That does not, I do not I'm a master like of flame, Derek. <laughs> right. I did seven damage. It's like, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little flight, right? Right. But, 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 you know, this, 
the the additive language is like now you're doing this awesome thing, right? So for e, this game, right? Same thing. Here's a cool name. Hell, for e gives you a little flavor text that you can actually read because it's separate from the it's information. Like, yeah, you, you know what it. it is. Yeah. And then like you do the thing, right? And, and this is what both games do really well. To Derek's point, right? Is it, 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 it's actually tying the RP to the G, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's going, this is what's happening narratively, and we're going to translate that mechanically. Narratively, I am poofing into a puff of ash and disappearing. And mechanically, I am teleporting, which means I can't be targeted and all that stuff, aka I disappeared, and I'm moving over here and appearing, and you can't react to that you because can't chance that's it, how yeah. teleporting mm -hmm. works, right? And so the narrative and the mechanics line up and sink in very well. This is why, again, like like I always talk about like how strong 4E is with the class fantasy. Because if you're a leader, you are buffing and you are healing and you are inspiring your people and you you cannot not do that. Mm -hmm. right? right. Like like the defenders are designed to tank, right? And the same thing here, obviously, because of the inspirations. Like, like, oh, you're gonna pick this character, the character who can rage and do all kinds of attacks. Every power in your sheet is designed to make you feel like an orc fury. Mm -hmm. right. There is nothing on that sheet that you're like, eh, this feels awkward. Even your your triggered action, which you know we never got to, but Derek mentioned before, oh, this is that really defensive? When 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 Bob gets attacked, he gets to just make an attack back, mm -hmm. which is sick, right? Like like just like hey, oh oh fuck me, fuck you, right? <laughs> um, like that is a very Fury feeling, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't feel like a tactician. It doesn't feel like the shadow guy. It feels like you, though. Mm -hmm. It feels like your character, right? Yeah. And that's why these games are cool like that, right? Because they are they are adding to what you can do because of how their approach and design versus going, well, we got to make sure this shit's locked out of balance because if this is too powerful, this is all Bob's going to do, yeah. right? Or whatever concerns What's they have. What's that uh, game score thing you guys always do? GNS. GNS. Do you think... Um, there's no way that a game could be like a 10 tactical, 10 heroic, 10 cinematic. And so what they're trying to do is give you the best cinematic they can, but but also give you the best heroic they can with the best tactical they can while still being in fantasy. I mean, fantasy. those terms are, I mean, those are their yeah. terms. Correct. Those, what those, I'm those, saying those is, are their made up we said terms. tactical, yeah. we said PF2, 4E was right. more tactical. Right. So it's like, okay, well, then this game's not as tactical. Well, it's as tactical as it can be while still being as heroic as it can yeah, be. Yeah, trying well, to like trying to get as... When, as high as it can get with all of them being in a good spot. When you add in more tactics, you slow the game down. Yeah. It's but it, the way it goes. But it and felt slowing fast. the game down in this case makes it less than a Mac and a Rook. Correct. Right. And so they so, yeah, couldn't you, go too high in it. So you, it felt yeah. it right. felt tactical enough to I mean, be if cinematic. Their objective, I mean, it was a little too modern and technical for me. But if their objective was to create a fantasy game. That felt heroic, cinematic, and tactical. I think that they succeeded. They're certainly in the ballpark. I mean, yeah. give, again, two years to go. So, right. Yeah. So this is a good start if that's the direction they're going in. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I and so I guess ultimately for me, um, there's a lot of promise there. I I think the reason that, I brought it up because way, Pumpkin said this, he saw, he felt like it was a good middle ground between tactics and cinematic, and I was like, I actually don't disagree with that. I think right. it was a. Good well, I don't middle. necessarily think that cinematic has to be opposite from tactics. That's probably a good point. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I think cinematic is in, is in huh. the way that it's that that the game lives in and the type of visualization that you. In other words, cinematic means does this feel and look like a movie? Yeah, 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 if it yeah, feel, yeah. If hmm. it if it plays hmm. out like a yeah. movie, if the imagery associated with the encounter or with the whatever the combat looks like something that you could see on the screen, that is cinematic. cinematic yeah. If it's not. Right. There are plenty of things that we do in D&D and Pathfinder 2 where you go, well, this was effective, but it was yeah, undoubtedly very late. You're not going to see that in a movie. Mm -hmm. Right. Aragorn. No, no, it's greasing up. Uh, yeah, Aragorn, Aragorn and Boromir aren't going to like, you know, uh, I don't know, like throw a hobbit clad in full plate armor down a flight of stairs because, you know, I don't know. There's some like some. I'm sure we've done that before. You know, some stupid reason, you know. Um so again, I think that that's where you know. <laughs> oh, Wolfenstein's on it. Reload crossbow. Right. <laughs> the um, ultimate cinematic tactical so maneuver. You do like you do. <laughs> well, no, the best part is he goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, remember I, I clarified that. I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Oh, gravity <laughs> weapon. Yeah, gravity <laughs> weapon. <laughs> um, and so I think that uh, you know. Now I will say this. I mean, the other thing is, I mean, I don't want to give too much too much credit because there are other games 
that had predeceased, uh, not predeceased, predeceased, but, uh, preceded, it's pre-dead. preceded MCDM RPG that got rid of the attack roll. Oh, okay. So like into the odd, mm-hmm. got rid of the attack roll. You just go straight to the damage roll. So this is not the first time that this is being done. But what I can say about this game as from what I've seen, which is why I was a little surprised at the check, the, the skill checks, not having a success, but with a complication for failure. Yeah. The game seems really, really, really designed about making sure that you as a player never feel like I did nothing. Right. And that it should be heroic, which is heroic. Yeah. Right. Because that is that is to me, that is the biggest problem with D&D. Mm-hmm. This is your moment. To be the big damn right. hero. Literally, you, your win, your 15-minute window. And then you roll low, and instead you let yourself down and everyone down and God down, and no one, God. you know, no one will ever, you know. It, 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 and your the, name is stricken. And I get it. Yeah, and, now, this, and I'm and, the first, by the way, I'm the first person to say it. I'll I'll I've said it before. The chance of those moments, right? The the uncertainty of those moments is what can make them live in infamy. Sure. Right. It's that will this happen or won't this happen? Oh my God. It's well, that's so what we talked about earlier. Do do, do these okay. become? I don't know. Like, but if you're always hitting, does it just not feel the same? But a lot of the problem, and, and that's true. If you're playing first edition D and D, okay. If you're playing BX D and D, the fact is the modern day RPG, the Pathfinder Two. Yeah, they're not even designed. They this have way. been they, yeah. while they still have that attack roll. Yeah. They have been engineered. Yeah. Around that attack roll, the the game's math has you know, already done that for you. You're just going through the motions. Yep. So so in this, I remember feeling, I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was like the third or fourth round of combat. I was finally had saved up enough rage to do my weakened strike that was able to weaken the enemy. So therefore, when you're talking about, like, it's your time to shine, and then you miss. It was my time to finally shine, and I was able to do what I wanted to yeah. do, what I've been building up. do it. I was finally yeah. able to save up enough for it. Tactically, I made the right decisions, hypothetically, till the fourth round. Yeah. So, so that felt cool. Yeah, I mean, and, and I did a lot of with this that. is modern game design. Again, I yeah. cannot stress. I know Derek doesn't play anything, but like these are how MMOs and video games work. Yeah. Sure, you're always going to build up and do the cool thing, right? And 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 I, I, I mean, liked it. God of War. Kinda yeah. If mm-hmm. I go, if I hit enough dudes hard enough, no matter how bad I am, and I'm awful. Build at up this my game, counter enough. <laughs> I, I I build up my Spartan Rage, and then I go, oh, I'm gonna unload. And with Spartan Rage, it's for like you know, oh, you suck at this game. Well, here you go. Now you can play, right? Like Spartan Rage. You and I'm like, s- you're speaking to me. <laughs> huh? You're speaking to me. So, yeah, exactly. Of all the modern video games, it's also very cinematic. When, when I had a, when I had a roommate for a little while there, he played God of War, one of the gods. Of War, yep. one of the newer ones. Uh, God of God of War, the reboot, right? Whatever. And, pre pre Ragnarok. And basically, it consisted of cutscenes and then him running through a level, fighting a bunch of insignificant monsters, yep. more or less. Then getting, his your, then getting a really tough boss. Yep. And then there was a a bar and a bunch of quick time events. Yep. Then it would be back to a cutscene yep. and a bunch of dialogue trees. Yeah. That is what this game feels like. The RPG. Yeah. And I like that. Right. And I think a lot of people You would do. like God of War. Oh, I, I love God of War. Derek right. hates. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know he, I, he, <laughs> he hates it. those quick Derek's time like, scenes. That's not even a game. He hates the quick time scenes. I love quick time scenes. Right. Yeah. I Quick time events to me are the yeah, most quick time horrible things, thing ever. Like just tap triangle, then square, then. You know, I, I have a great. soft spot in my heart for God of War because of Christopher Judge. So. <laughs> uh, for, teal, for those of you who are not super nerds. Um, so for me. I don't know if you'll always win in this game all the time because. Death is real. Well, I, I, but if you get, play it, if you play smart enough, I mean, again, we just played that's, one that's level kind of, of a play choice. Test. It's kind of like Pathfinder Two, where yeah. where death is a choice. I'll say this, Gabe. Oh, we, it was hard to hard to so, tell. So <laughs> this is the other thing. This is difficult to to understand, especially if you've been playing a lot of Pathfinder Two. You see, what ended up happening? This actually started in Third Edition. So to be fair, this is fair. Um, what happened in Third Edition was when people were playing it. This is why Third Edition failed as an edition of D anD. d Third edition D&D, like every edition of D&D before it, was designed around the idea that your hit points would slowly deplete over the course of a day, which meant that any individual fight that you fought didn't have to even have the risk of taking you from 100 to zero. Each fight might take you down 15 to 25 percent, right? That's a random number. But it adds up. But it adds up. And so when you get to the when you're suddenly at 30 percent hit points going into that fight and you go. This could be mm-hmm. a thirty percent right. costly fight. You the, the the tension 
build slowly over the course of the day. The problem is that third edition was broken by Cure Light Wounds Wand Spam, mm. which allowed people at a very, very cheap price to full teal at the end of every fight in a very short amount of time, mm. which meant now that every fight had to be, had to be, yeah. poss- had to be capable yeah. of killing you. Because if it didn't, then right. there there was no cost. And, and that's a key thing. Mm. Like even even like the boss fights in third edition were designed to not kill you. Right. The reason the so, boss fight was scary is because you had to fight through everyone else to get Yeah. So there. they're trying to take your resources, right? Well, oh, right. It's, shoot. A, it's a it's a depletion yeah. of resources. Um whoa. whoa, we got well there was a tip before this, but then this one really <laughs> caught my eye. <laughs> Boothby tip first. Okay. We should probably read Boothby's Boothby, first. Well, we got we got a tip from Boothby. It says, uh just just got home, so no useful comments or questions for me other than nice to see you the group back together. It's nice to be here. I missed uh, you guys. Oh, yeah, it, it's been a it's been a very fantastic time. It, but it also is nice to just break down a game after we just played it absolutely we <laughs> just played it in the last yeah, Friday, yeah. you know and actually talk about it's kind of it. nice um and again you know we've we've in a game i actually read we have criticized <laughs> certain aspects of the game but i'm also like as aaron said trying to put an eye towards the future yeah. and try to find the, the positive elements and the, the interesting things and i've played a lot of rpgs so when for me to say that something felt different in yeah. play it means something it's a big deal it's a big deal it's definitely different uh but all right focus on us we did get a 100 (laughs) dollar super chat from our good buddy coral he Mm -hmm. says playing the tactician in the game scratched an itch i've had since i played a warlord in fourth edition and i want to talk about this interesting so you played the warlord right i can't believe you didn't take the tactician did you were you played the warlord so we had we had all the characters laid out and we all agreed no one was going to play the talent because that was too complicated. I was like the psionic. That was character. all the things in the back. Yeah, yeah, all the things in the back. And so we knew that I was playing Orc Fury. So sure. I can't. Bob called dibs on that. Because, he didn't even know the name of the class. He's like, I, I call the barbarian, whatever. <laughs> uh, you would are, you brought your sheet, and you didn't even give other people a chance. I I sent in the the separate group chat. I'm going to be the Orc Fury. <laughs> so Coral, I completely agree with you because when I read the tactician, okay, I was like, wow. Not only is this the warlord, it's like the warlord defender fighter. Like it's like everything that I would think that run you would it back, ever... Smith. Just run it back. <laughs> but then, but then you let Bob play it. Or, uh, uh, George, George, George play it. Yeah. Well, one. I mean, and it was a dwarf. And it's it like, was. A, it's like everything you and want. It was a dwarf. <laughs> I'm. I'm not like Bob, where I play like the same character every time. Like sure. I, I play range. It was I've a been, play test. I just wanted to know something I was comfortable with. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of casters recently. Uh, I had a you know Claire before then. Uh, it's been a while since I played uh, a rogue. I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Okay. Right? Uh, roguelike characters are are one of the classes that's hard to get right. Yeah, in my opinion. And and actually, and I feel felt, like they did a great it job. Felt pretty good. Let me give. <laughs> let me let me create. Put, I, I don't like those classes typically, and this one was fun. It was good. I, okay. Let me put it this. I will say this again. This is speaking as somebody who, uh, again, I, I like to feel like I'm impactful. Mm-hmm. If I was playing that. Tactician, the one that Coral talked about. And he talked about scratching an itch. And I, I completely understand it. And I'll tell you why. Because as my character, as, I mean, if this doesn't sound like a fourth edition term, but maybe even on crack, I don't know it does. This could be my turn. My turn starts. I attack the enemy, right? I do a bunch of damage. I can't miss. My ally, spend a recovery, mm-hmm. heal some hit points. Then with my maneuver, I hinder this enemy. Right. Then with my free maneuver, Time. I taunt this enemy. Then on my turn, the en- enemy turns towards me. He attacks my ally. He gets two banes. Yes, he's within right? range. <laughs> he, gets, he's, he gets two banes. So the 15 damage, it's reduced down to 10. Then I parry it. It's reduced down to five. I spend a point of focus and reduce another D6 plus three, and it's reduced to zero. The feel oh, yeah. Yeah. of being like, I am doing the thing. Yeah, you're playing your class. And this, I t- and don't take this lightly. I watched him play Smith, the wo- Wood Elf, Wood Elf shadow, shadow, which was like a magic shadow rogue, for lack of better words. Yeah. Which, to be fair, if I am going to play a rogue, that's exactly the kind of rogue I would play. I hate rogues, and I will not play them mm-hmm. because they are not like that. <laughs> that is the type of rogue I will play. Yeah. Hmm. When I, when a rogue character has that sort of quasi magical ability yeah. and actually feels like they are a glass cannon, true dealer of death, yeah, and able to get in and out of situations. You took an extra turn at one point. It was wild. Yeah, so that's yeah, one of my heroic powers. That yeah. thing was so again it, crazy. It, it, that, that everyone was looking at me like, "Are you sure you read that right?" Yeah, I, yeah, that one, I still that don't one. know. <laughs> I still don't know that we read that right. But yeah, that one was weird. But anyways, <laughs> but the point is. Um, 
you're right when you say it scratches an itch. One of the things I really like about fourth edition, and and again, this is a play test version, and there's a lot Cor- of things about fourth edition. Coral, that- did you play in Pumpkins game uh, in the in the Discord, or did you play? Uh, just on your own. I, uh, just if you can in the chat, I just want to know. There's a lot of things that this game did correctly. Um, th- you know that fourth edition does correctly. Uh, that this game maybe is still struggling with a little bit. Yeah. But the one thing that this game I think definitely did and delivered on big time was that class fantasy. You I know, heard that because because fourth edition. One of the reasons I like it so much yeah. is that it's it's like, I'm I I'm a fighter. I'm a defender. I'm going to be defending. And if yeah. I'm a paladin, I'm a defender, I'm going to be defending. And it feels it feels like that class. I get the powers and the mm-hmm. abilities to do it. Yeah. But because we're playing D20, sometimes the dice just don't go your way and you did nothing. That's okay. I played a warlord in 4A, so I just commander strike all the time and it was right. the best experience. How of did my the life. how did the monster feel for you? That's a great question. Um so there's two things we know we, we, how we felt as yeah, heroes. So there, there's there's two things that we haven't talked about, which we'll kind of maybe wrap up on. Okay. So the first is real quick because we we skipped this section. All right? Oh, okay. Um, we did not know if we have missed your questions. I know there's been a lot of chat in here. Uh, super chat tips are a great way to pop it up. We have it right here, so we can see it. It's hard for us to see the full chat because it just goes by so fast and but, randomly become popular so like it's hard to read today <laughs> but well, if we missed know. a question just just throw it out there put question in it in caps yeah. so that we can see it easier and we'll this. try to get to it if you have a question about the play test and about our experience or about what we drop a comment you know if you're if you're not a member of the patreon yeah. you know, that, if you're a member of the patreon just drop it in the, in the yeah then you we can just talk about it we'll chat about it but if you do have a question put in the comments to this video and i'll try to get through and, and try to answer most most questions that i can they were very open about they, they said in the in the patreon post they were like we don't have any ndas with this we want you to take the game we want you to play it with people you know so i'm trying not hard i'm trying hard not to just show them everything in the game which yeah. is why i have like this one copy of the of the one character sheet but again um you know overall i thought they were pretty open about it so we could be open about it so the two things we haven't talked about one is the negotiation system. Yeah, right. which we just skipped. We skipped that because right. of the way there that you was, get... uh, You know, to this day, I don't know why people write adventures with towers. <laughs> well, this one wrote it and knew what you were going to do. They at least prepared for it. They yes, prepared at least, for it. At least they prepared That's for it. That's more than I could say about all the other The ones. only thing I will <laughs> say about the negotiation system is this. I like it. I don't know that I like it for this game. Interesting. It, it, I was very surprised to see that the last third of the book was a negotiation system. I did not see that one coming. Because in my experience, negotiations are neither tactical, cinematic, yeah. nor heroic. Right. I mean, if you're negotiating with like an elven princess, maybe it's fantasy. But yeah. other than that, it is none of those three things. Right. If this, if there was ever a game, point. I mean, to quote a heroic, cinematic, fantasy character, enough talk. Right. <laughs> Well, that's right. If there was ever a game where it was like, make a presence roll, they agree, and the so adventure Pumpkin moves on. Pumpkin ran it, and he said the negotiation system was meh. So, and he ran it. The whole, he, they, they went in the front door. Well, the problem with okay, well, the, the, the problem is, and I, again, I'm not, I'm not faulting the writers of this thing. That negotiation that is used in the playtest adventure is terrible. Uh, I mean, like, just the premise of it is mm, terrible. Okay. That is not the thing that the game should be focused on. Like, like it's weird to have that. They they shoehorned it in because they needed to put a negotiation in there, but it's a really wonky thing to have a negotiation for. That being said, there are... And Trey, <laughs> Trey says, I barely know how to talk to a biblically accurate angel, much less know how to repl- role-play with one. Yes, it's very weird. There's just suddenly an angel in the tower. <laughs> I, I still like that. Like, like, like... Because it's literally that negotiation. I think Trey played in pumpkin. Uh, an game. angel. We must negotiate. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, like you're sitting down at the UN with this thing. You I, know. I will <laughs> say that there are elements of this that would work amazing in a game like Legend of the Five Rings. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I was reading this. I was like, this would make a lot more sense. This would make What's a lot more sense in Legend of the Five Rings. Um, uh, yeah. Well, it says POTC has a lot of negotiations and and it's heroic and cinematic. POTC. POTC. I don't know. That's why I, I, I like. I usually know some acronyms just by knowing you guys, but that one that one stumped me. I do not know I what POTC know. is. That's a lot of negotiations. Um, we'll feel dumb here in a minute when someone tells us yeah, what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, I don't feel dumb. Role, that, I didn't know what that, that was. That's not a role playing game. Oh, it's you're just, just saying a movie. movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then it would be cinematic. He's uh, saying it has a bunch of negotiations. Yeah, but uh, again, I don't think it was tactical and cinematic. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they, I agree with Duran's cat. You know. Um, 
You can take the offer or continue for extra. And the reason, Durin's Cat, that, that we said that this would work really well in Legend of the Five Rings is the Legend of the Five Rings system is constructed around uh, your characters are nobles. And a mm. lot of what you're doing is, you know, negotiating peace treaties yeah. and negotiating for marriages and negotiating like <laughs> negotiation you know. is intense in Legend of the Five Rings. Exactly. But, but to Derek's point, it's it's something that every character does it's everybody so ganza says colville really likes diplomacy it sounds like he wanted something similar i here. could i could totally see that yeah we like diplomacy yeah, we don't fact, we don't shove it in every game we no play. no diplomacy the the board game that's what i'm talking about yeah we like diplomacy sure. the game you've played yeah. it a lot but we don't put it in every game we play either. yeah it, it, again i think it's a great i mean it, it's a little rough but there's certain elements about the negotiation system mm. that for me as someone who has used mechanical negotiation systems that are actually i'm not going to say so you're saying you liked it but not in this game correct yes. okay and even then, I'm saying it still has some flaws got to it. 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 But the fact that it, they... It, it just feels weird that it's here. The the fact that they... Um, there's, cer there's certain things that he addresses with the negotiations that a lot of mechanical social intrigue games don't address right. that make it really work. Like the patience versus interest. Very cool. Which, as you said, Aaron, almost every good subsystem yeah. ends up looking like EverQuest 2's crafting system. That's correct. In fact... Game hack of the day. I know we got a lot of game designers <laughs> in the Patreon, hard on this channel. Like, you want to go make a new game system? Look at EverQuest 2 Crafting. Just make it that. Yes. <laughs> because that's what everyone else does. They <laughs> just don't know that. Right. Well, I mean, fundamentally, <laughs> it is it is risk versus reward. Yeah. Right? It is. It is press it, your luck. Press your luck. And so the idea of this game system is you want to raise their interest. The higher you get their interest, the better deal you're going to get with your negotiation. Hey, I'll give you a daughter, my ugliest one. Hey, I'll give you my daughter, my prettiest one. Hey, I'll give you my daughter, my firstborn one that has all my lands, right? Like you want to get yeah, higher, higher, up the, higher. Up hey, the I'll give you my firstborn daughter and three goats. Right. And you get above that. But the character, the, the person you're negotiating with has a patience level, which is falling. And if it gets to zero, negotiation over. What I like too is that the system is clearly modeled after me. <laughs> Lance, huge tracks, tracks of land. Because the way this works is when you're out patients, you're done, right? So like we would be negotiating, Bob, and at some point I would just be like, you know what? I don't care. I don't want any of them. I don't want anything. I'm out. I'm done. I'm just leave. <laughs> The best is if Smith just left. <laughs> like he just went home. Like, what um, just happened? <laughs> so I, I I feel like I feel like in general uh, that is a cool system and and and, and the way of, okay. of expressing it is really good. Um, and I like that the game system has uh, a skill check, but it's not just skill spam, right? Where like a lot of you know skill challenges. In fact, yeah, I like how they did this. It was fact, really good. In fact, using a skill comes at a cost. Right. It's going to erode the person's patience. But if you can. Give a reason doesn't have to necessarily be in character, but if you can hit one of their characters' motivations or right. something they care characters about, characters have motivations and pitfalls. Motivations and pitfalls. If you hit, if you hit one of the motivations, mm -hmm. you basically get you raise their interest level and their um, patience level does not decrease. Mm -hmm. It's like a freebie, and there's right. no dice roll. So basically, so it rewards paying attention. So it rewards paying attention, which L five R does, which is cool. Which is cool. So again, I thought it was an interesting system. I just don't think it belongs in this game. Right. Interesting. So do you think there is a negotiation system that does belong in this no. game? Oh, fact, you think it, you just rip, remove it? Nope. In fact, one of the reasons why I always like praise Pathfinder 2nd Edition's social system is because I say this is perfect for yeah. fourth, uh, for Pathfinder 2E's needs. Hey, we're, we're, we, you enter the town. The barkeep is really gruff. I smooth things over with him. I talk to him. I talk him up. Make an impression. Oh, good. He's now friendly. Great. I'm going to ask him to blah, blah, blah. Oh, perfect. You can request now because he's friendly. Right. Yep. He so agrees. Simple, quick. He agrees yep. to show you the secret way into the sewers. Done. And now we're back to the heroic adventure. Right. Uh, Guess what's in the sewers? Yeah. Combat! Yeah. So you think it's really taking More me from negotiation. The, no, I don't. <laughs> it's taking me from the heroic and the cinematic for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, okay. I just don't feel like okay. th that's what this game is really all about. So uh, we got a $10 super chat. From our friend uh, of Coach JK. Uh, Coach JK says, I'm tempted to give every NPC a patience level in any game I run from now on, honestly. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> There's a meta GM patience you're just, level. And you're like, it, their patience goes to zero, they attack. I mean, I it's, think. It's actually just the GM's patience level with his players. Yeah. <laughs> but it gets well, to zero, the game, yeah. campaign's over. How well, far did you guys get? Uh, level two. Oh. Well, so, <laughs> okay, side nerd tangent. I like the idea that as an NPC, if their patience gets to zero, it's almost like a pseudo unmasking, mm. right? Like they might go, you know, enough talk, yeah. you know, draw steel, or they might say like, you know, they might 
just, you know, I, say I, they I, might outburst and call like you, that. you know, call you a horrible, you know, name or something like that. Like, it's almost kind of like they don't want to go. They don't want to get their patients to zero either. Right. Like to have them have a negative right. consequence. Yeah. So you get cool lines like, don't make me have to do this. Yeah. Don't, don't say something we'll both regret. Right. Right. Don't say something <laughs> we'll both. Re- if you keep down this line, yeah. you're going to make me angry and I, you're, I'm going to end up drawing seal. So there's that element of, stri- of strife that is in L5R which is kind of already tied to this. So right. I think that's kind of an interesting idea. So I really like it from that. Yeah, it's a good system. It's just weird that we find it here. It's weird that we find it here. So okay. again, I, 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 and I, I didn't get to experience because I can't read it as well as you guys yeah. read it. And then we didn't play it. If sure. I had to take yeah. a guess, if I'm a, if I'm a gambling man and I am, I would bet <laughs> uh, this doesn't make the game. <laughs> you think it's going to cut? I think so. I'm betting. Or, I, I think we'll see it again, but is not there here. anything like this in 5e? No. no. So they'll, I don't see why they wouldn't. Have I just it think there. that a lot of they'll people. They'll cut it I and then they'll just keep of, it closer. I think, I think that a lot of the people, it's not even about the game or the tile or the tone. I think a lot of people who are going to be attracted to this game, who are coming over from Five E, are going to be the type of people who go, "I don't want any mechanics in my role play." They'll probably just put and, it as and an they'll, optional role in a GMG they'll refer, or something. They'll refer to these as role play scenes. Yeah, and you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, optional rule. That's maybe, how I maybe, see it. That's how I see it. Maybe an optional rule. Yeah, yep. I could see that. Um, yeah, 5e has disposition levels just like Pathfinder 2, just like 3rd mm-hmm. edition D&D, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, supplement. Some yeah, like, I, so I, could, I could see some along those lines. So, yeah, yeah so I, I think that, that it could yeah. be that I, way, but I just we'll, don't. We'll see it again. I don't think it'll be. I, as, a whole, as a whole, as a whole, the RPG community, okay, which includes old grognards, but also some of the, you know, the people who've basically only played 5th edition D&D. As a whole, for whatever reason, this community hates social mechanics. Actually, well, was, what I was going to say is this community weirdly always tries to hack in a social system. Like, like how many social combats have we seen in the homebrew channel? Oh, but, but no, that's why. But I mean, that's just because we have like a weird group of patrons who are really into the same stuff that we are into. Yeah, but I've seen that before. No, too. by and large, people hate that stuff. They want, they just go, they just I, fight. I just want to know that. No, I just want to talk it out. And then the GM goes, yeah, you said the right words. Oh, they literally go. just want to like literally meta RPG it. They just want to role play it. Yeah. And they want it they just want to FBT be. It. They want to FBT it, mm. you know, role play it. Or, you know, yeah. or be like, you know, we don't need the mechanics. You mm. said something that this, and I, I am, I am this NPC, you know, and I felt the weight of your words. Yeah. And so rather than rely on a dice roll, I'm just going to say, I agree with you, you know. That's fine. Well, this is what I, happens I, I th- when you have 10 million players injected into your game and you go from uh, math majors to art majors. Uh, p- potentially, or just more casual people. Yeah. Um, and for yeah, what, I think a lot and more, more importantly, people. I'm pretty sure that's how Critical Role does it. So that's how they learn how to do it, too. So, yeah, I think that a lot of people view mechanicizing social as like ruining the purity of the role play. Which is funny because I would have thought that until I played L5R. And then I was right. like, man. It's deep and it feels really impactful. Well, that's because you played a good game with good players. And that good director. The, mo- <laughs> most people play L five R like garbage. Oh, um, oh. yeah, they play. Then I have no idea because it, it, I was like everything felt intense. Frosty, <laughs> I'm glad you're. Maybe I, we, 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 we weren't sure if you got auto modded and timed out, but uh, <laughs> no, he was commenting earlier. Oh, okay, too because we thought that was a really funny joke. Um, <laughs> off to play Pathfinder Second Edition Happy Adventure Real. Frosty, love it. We'll see you later, buddy. Um, so yeah, so that's negotiations. Okay, so the last thing, monsters. You guys played against them. I played with them. A couple of just quick thoughts. They had roles. They're basically exactly the fourth edition roles. And in some cases, literally the same names. Yes. Weirdly, they didn't change all those names. They changed Lurker, which actually I approve of. Yeah, calling a Lurker the ambusher, I think, is uh, yeah. is smart. That was better. The roles felt a little weak. The, the, you had, the, let's the, see, so let, let's frame the battle for the audience. You had uh, uh, a leader, which in this case acted more like an elite from 4th uh, edition. So think uh, two monsters in one. You had a uh, soldier. Yep. Okay. And we had a skirmisher. We got rid of him. I got rid of the skirmisher because and then you guys we, only had three PCs. Right. And then we had five-ish minions. Correct. And okay. there was actually a second soldier. Uh, there was two soldiers. There were okay. two soldiers. Yeah. Yeah, so there was two soldiers, five minions, partridge in a pear tree. Um, and then there was the leader, which, as Aaron said, is, is kind of like a, a double monster. You know, not it quite had a, two, It had two initiatives. It had two initiatives yeah. and everything like that. Um, 
But not to be confused with a solo, which is even bigger than that. Right. Solo is capable of literally fighting an entire party on its own. Right. This this is obviously designed to be surrounded by another smaller team, but it, it takes up two spots. Um, I will say that um, the the yeah. So Coral, I completely agree with you. Really wasn't a fan of how flat the damage of the enemies felt. The boss didn't feel that much scarier than the ads, and more or less I agree with that. Now the minions. You know, they only did like D4 damage, so that felt appropriate. But it was like the the base soldier did about as much damage as the leader did, you know, because mm. it's all just like the same amount of damage. Now, I don't know how super difference it is. And didn't have that like you magic. About, when, you're about, when you think about Pathfinder 2, like how much different, you know, how much damage differences are really between monsters at a given level? Probably minimal. You know, no, but I mean, if you're typically in PF2, if you're throwing a boss type creature, they're gonna be higher levels that are in crit more. Yeah, uh, I just, did notice the leader had. Farm or AOEs. AOEs. I was going to say, I felt like we were yeah. getting hit all the time. So I, I've said this before. I, I mean, I've talked about this on the stream, and it's even like when we do boss design for mm -hmm. like Northern Reaches, our Pathfinder 2 Mega Campaign, I always say action economy has to be on the a leader, boss, solo, monster side. You need to – you can't just target one person. Yeah. Because the problem with targeting one person is in order to make it worth the villain's time, that that attack has to be just d d completely devastating. Right. And, and like even in Pathfinder 2, where it might be like a really high accuracy attack that does a ton of damage and then it gets doubled because you crit and you basically take somebody from, you know, near full to dead in mm -hmm. one round. It's not fun. What's better is to do 20 to 30 percent to like four or five characters, right? Because then it's like it, it raises the tension, yeah. it raises pressure the stakes, on everyone, puts pressure on everyone. And I felt like this boss, uh, this leader monster did a good job. Of he that, did. You know, so I thought that was pretty good. I personally loved the. Uh, you know, the way chance hits worked. It was so fast. Mm -hmm. It was so quick. It was easy to do. Yeah, chance hits felt nice. Yeah. The soldiers could taunt. That's cool. And that was very effective. The people that, did not like getting taunted. That was a big deal. That yeah. was big game. So I really, really appreciated that. I like uh, I like minion thresholds. I'll steal that for 4 -E. Yeah, I will steal that for fourth edition as well. That is what was the threshold? That is from MCDM. Well, it was from F Flea Mortals, Flea Mortals, but they're using yeah. it here. So the way that fourth edition minions worked or work is one hit minions have one hit point. Mm -hmm. If you attack a minion and you do if you hit, then it's dead. End of story. Couple of things. Number one, you can miss a minion in fourth edition. And let me tell you something. Nothing. You think it <laughs> you think it feels horrible when you miss some normal monster. When you miss a minion in it fourth edition. Hit. Okay, that's, that's, that's when you walk away from the table. That's when drink. you get up and you walk away from the table. Okay? <laughs> now, to be fair, now to be fair. The, the part of that idea is, well, if you're like the kind of character who does a lot of damage in one target, you, the fourth edition says you shouldn't even be attacking a minion. Mm -hmm. Right. You that's that's for the characters who have AOEs and stuff, because then they can target three or four of them and they're they're unlikely to miss every single one right. of them. Unless you're me. OK, so I don't know if you ever played a controller. Yeah, I had, a, uh, I had a wizard. Okay, you had a wizard. And right. your, uh, your mass my, combat. Campaign. My Northern Reaches. Campaign. Yeah, your Northern Reaches. The original yeah. Northern Reaches. So a yeah. couple things here because you can't miss in this game. If you attack a minion, you will do at least one point of damage, right. which means you will kill the enemy. I mean, maybe if you have five Banes, you could do zero somehow. But I long story true. short, you will never miss a minion, which is great. But the other problem with the minion is it has this problem where if you kill that minion and you did four, you know, 14 damage, 15 damage, it right. feels cool. But there's a bunch of other minions around you. Yeah. You're supposed to be this badass warrior. And like, like if you're like a striker and you use like an encounter power on a minion you wouldn't but let's say if you did right you're like wow i did 40 damage yeah well you needed to do one right right so so how they deal with minions here solves actually both problems correct okay which you have this this threshold where if you you attack a minion that minion's dead but if you have enough damage over where you beat another minion's threshold and that minion is in range of your attack that minion's dead. And you could basically just keep cleaving through as long as you have the, the damage and the okay. range. So the first one, they all have a threshold. Right. But yeah. the first one, it doesn't matter. First one's dead. dead. Oh, okay. So, for example, if the damage threshold of the minions you were fighting was five. So that meant that if you hit a monster, if you hit a minion, it was dead. But if you did at least five damage, then you were going to kill that minion plus another one. Mm. If you did ten damage, 
then you would kill the one you initially targeted. As long as they were in range of As you. long as they were within range right. of your attack. Yeah. Sweet. So, okay. theoretically, I guess you I could know kill that. two or three or four with one hit. Right. Nice. And it feels very cinematic. Yes. Because this is, this, is, this is the character cleaving. This is the cannon fodder. This is the cannon fodder. Right. And even when we play basic D&D. Yeah, old cleaving rules. I use heroic cleaving, which yeah. is like. Oh, a, I love the way you do cleave. You, you, right. Uh, you saw one of my favorite things. That's basically what this is. This yeah, is what yeah. this is. Keep rolling. I'm like, oh, yeah, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It feels awesome. Awesome. So what ends up happening is, you know, this game is obviously balanced differently than 4th Edition, where 4th Edition, they're like, no, we want minions to be something that the controllers deal right, with. Right. But in this game, if your barbarian yeah. so runs are up... Saying, are in, like mooks in 13th Age? Well, with, we can talk about the 13th okay. Age. In yeah. this game, if your barbarian rushes up into a big group of minions and does a big, huge attack and gets like 17 damage, you might take out four or five of them Got in it. one action. That feels pretty cool. Right. Yeah, versus now, wasting it yeah. on one guy because he only has one hit point. Right. The difference with 13th Age is, and this is a, actually a big difference. Yeah, this is huge because Derek and I actually don't like how 13th Age handles minions. Correct. Oh, okay. In 13th Age, if there was like six minions, they all get put into one pile of hit points. So it's oh. like it's like it's like 40 HP for these six char- six minions. Mm-hmm. And then every you know, whatever, seven hit points. You take one away. You take one away. Okay. But what ends up happening is the monsters don't feel real. I, this is a really weird thing to describe. Yeah. So this is more feeling than it is on this paper. This is a feeling. Oh, it's okay. a feeling Because thing. the science, you're like someone's going to go, the science is almost the, the same. The math is tight. <laughs> right. It but the feeling is what screwed it up. The feeling is what screwed up because in fourth edition and in MCD MRPG, each minion feels like its own independent mm-hmm. entity. And that makes it feel like it's a real foe. Whereas minions in 13th Age tend to feel a little bit more like swarms yeah. or troops from Pathfinder 2. Because you yeah. know you're going against a big hit Because you block. know that even though you're attacking that minion, you're not really attacking that minion. Mm-hmm. You're just attacking this like the, the blob. The blob. <laughs> and so it feels different. And I, I can't yeah. describe That's it any other way. And, and, yeah. and, and you know, part of the problem there too is Thirteenth Age is this weird mix of theater to mind with some grid, right? So right. it's not a tactical game. The the minis, if you even play with minis, are there just to be like a general awareness of the battle, right? Versus uh, MCDM where or Four E where no, that minion's there and he's going to move and he's going to take actions. So there's this tactical component of I'm going to kill this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and look, now they can't do anything. But you right. guys think it's more of a feel than it is a math thing. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But it is, it is, it's basically taking the 13th age concept and flipping it around. Right. It basically. While still allowing you to have one hit point minions. Right. Which is pretty cool. It's interesting. Uh, the other thing is too, I mean, this when, when I used minions in Pathfinder 2nd mm-hmm. Edition, not the Pathfinder 2 minions, but like actual <laughs> one hit point minions, um, I created... Uh, a similar thing, which is, and this was in Pathfinder 2. I got rid of the attack roll in Pathfinder 2 with my minions. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, I didn't want to completely. Is that a triune fight? Yeah. But I didn't completely ignore, I didn't want to completely ignore someone's armor class. So what like the minions did is they did like 60 damage minus your AC. So like if your AC was 55, you took five damage per hit. If your AC was 52, you took eight damage per right. hit. And it was just automatic. Doom, 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 doom. Because I didn't want to roll. Yeah. So minions, unfortunately, uh, do roll. It's not static, but it's usually a small number, yeah. and they and they get to go five at a time. Right. So in this is me controlling five minions in th- uh, an MCDM RPG. Whoosh. All right. And and by the way, there's even a rule which says they can each take their maneuver actions first, and then they can all yeah. make their attack. So basically, I could be like the oh you know four of the orc warriors swarm around you bob and i just move mini move mini move mini move mini they all attack i roll 44 oh yeah and i'm like you know 44 plus two you know eight take take 15 damage and that's it we're done that was their whole turn now the problem is and and it'll be interesting to see how they're going to help mitigate this is the boons and the banes are so individual so yes. oh, yeah. that we, scenario, we, we actually dealt up and uh, yeah. yeah, we had that come up. This scenario gets way more complicated when some are taunted, some are aided, some are hindered. Absolutely. And yeah. I mean, that's going to be something that's always yeah. going to happen when minions count as individuals. Now, to be fair, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Baning or taunting a minion? But um, <laughs> I mean, it came up. I, I mean, you might have an AOE up, taunt. I, I will also say just uh, uh, we, we, we always do have to take an opportunity to shout out the barbarian when we can. Everybody loves the barbarian in fifth edition. At least the damage risk. Yeah. Cool. What's cool about this game is we kind of touched. We didn't really touch on this, but armor in this game increases your hit points. 
Okay, because think about it. There's no damage reduction, and right. attacks always hit. So what does wearing heavier armor do for right. me then? It literally gives your character more hit points. Yes. Yeah, so, so the like tactician wearing, here, I want to say, had plus 17 hit points from his armor. Yeah, this, this, this character got 17 points of his 60 yeah. health from wearing basically like full plate and shield. Compared to like my kit, which I once I got like nine armor, or nine hit points out of. Hmm. Right. So uh, hit points are just, you know, and here's the thing. People are like, oh, whatever. Hit points were always abstracted. Right. Armor class was always abstracted. Yeah. Why have two? Why do you need two layers of abstraction? We've already established that hit points and armor, it all just is one big abstraction for. I think this is a wargaming thing. You know, it, it is a wargaming thing. But my, my point, I, this adding hit points from the armor didn't bother me at all, bit, actually. Yeah. Now, of course, it, there's that natural reaction to be like, but I want to be missed and take nothing. I get it, but sure. like, well, that's what the tactical uh, or not tech, the yeah, triggered actions are for. Right, that's true. That is the active, and that feels better. That feels like because the active defense. not being hit in D and D doesn't feel great. It just doesn't feel bad. Correct. Right. This feels like what you want to do is no. Like Derek goes, I'm attacking you, and you want to go, no, I'm getting out of the way. Actually, so Aaron just made my point for me. Okay, if, if you're a fan of this channel, then you know that I talk all the time about. Forge in the Dark and Blades in the Dark. And one of my favorite mechanics from Forge in the Dark is the resistance roll. Right. Why? Because the GM speaks the horrible thing that's going to happen to you. Right. And then you as a player get to take back control and say, no, I resist. And you get to take that consequence and reduce it. This is the same thing in MCDM mm -hmm. where I go, you take 12 damage and you go, no, I have agency here. I have control over my character's destiny. I'm going to use my triggered action. I'm going to parry. I'm going to shadow yeah. step mm -hmm. or whatever. And it feels extremely empowering. Yeah. I like it in Blades in the Dark because it feels very empowering to have that kind of control over your character. It might cost you some resources. It might use up your action. But the choice was yours. And yeah. you got to make it. I think so, it's a little bit better like in Blades in the Dark. I mean, I, I play Scum and Villainy. Because you know, Derek might go, uh, oh, the, the the Gauss rifle explodes around in your chest and you are completely evaporated. And then I can be like, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if your character wants to die, yeah. yes. But if, I, if I'm done for the evening, yeah. Oh, yeah, that happens. And and Gonza brings to a good point. Do they separate <laughs> health versus armor? No, in no, terms of no, the nope. healing and everything nope. like that. It's so a passive. Your once, your kit's passive. I mean, yeah. look at this character. Oh, your sheet. weapons. Yep. You just have 60 hit points yeah. now. In fact, in fact, when you get healed, so it helps you. Your armor helps your healing. You're, you 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 yeah. heal more. Yep. Yeah, yep. If and you're then, low on hit points, you take off your armor. You're dead. And before anybody says that's not realistic, tell me what the fuck a hit point is. Tell me what that is. And tell me if you someone goes, well, it's a combination of luck and dodge and everything like that. And it's like, okay, so when when someone crits in your game, do you describe it as like cleaving through bone and blood is spraying everywhere? No, no, no. Oh, you try to really resist the attack and it's stranger endurance. It, yes. How many times does somebody get hit? Never. With, no one yeah, ever no, says that. Gabe, it's leaders of blood. Absolutely. Always. Like, yes. No. In fact, think about how weird this would sound. I mean, imagine your character has a hundred. We, we use gallons, but yeah. Uh, imagine <laughs> <laughs> gallons of blood. <laughs> Pints and pints of blood. <laughs> like, imagine if you were playing D and D and your character had like a hundred hit points, right? And you like get hit, and I go, you know, you're like, you 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 hit the you crit the monster for thirty hit points, and I'm like, oh, he like dodges out of the way of it. It's like, oh man, you can really tell that he's gonna have some delayed onset muscle soreness tomorrow. <laughs> you're like, Actually, I think you should try that. Let's see what happens. Let's go for it. You know, so like it's it's just one of those things where it just doesn't make you know it doesn't already do, it already doesn't make sense. You know, hit points have already yeah. been you know make sense. And last um, time I checked, none of us are playing uh, naval cruisers, so I don't actually know why we have armor class. Right. <laughs> like contrast that with Legend of the Five Rings, where if somebody crits you, it means they hit you, and right. you could have all of your quote unquote hit points. Right. And like the first attack of the combat it just kills could you. Be you getting critically hit, and I'm like, uh, ooh, you lose an arm. A roll of fitness test. Well, the good news is you didn't die. The bad news is you have lost your arm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you're bleeding out. Right. Or, and you will be dead in a couple of minutes. But that doesn't make you fatigued. Don't you get like, you can also be like scarred badly and stuff like and, that. And, yeah. and you know what? And reasonably slow. Because how, how could I possibly. Yeah, losing your arm. That's how not, could that's I possibly not tiring be fatigued? I'm not tired. Yeah. If anything. I didn't even I, try to dodge. I, weigh, <laughs> yeah, I, didn't have, I didn't even have an opportunity to fight back. In fact, I weigh less now. I'm still fried. I weigh less now. <laughs> I'm not bogged down by this person. <laughs> limb. <laughs> this limb was holding me back. Um. Self confessed says more hit points is definitely better than damage reduction, but I still don't like it. Shrug. No, nope. it's weird. I feel like Vin is going to talk this BS and he'll play and be like, okay, I kind of liked it. No, <laughs> Vin, Vin, you're not going to like this game because it doesn't have big numbers. Uh, that anyway, actually is probably true. That is actually true. But I think he would like this game. Um, Isaiah, mm -hmm. 
I prefer DR to HP shrugs. I like DR over HP too, but the, the reality is DR sets up a situation where you can do zero. Mm -hmm. And they are just trying to avoid. Yeah, but that's that. just what this game's trying to do. Here's the thing, and people in chat are going to lose their shit over this. Uh, this game is not trying to be uh, simulationist in any fucking way whatsoever. No, it. Would you Would you agree with me that the G score is like, you know, seven or eight? Oh yeah. And then the S score is like one or zero. I mean, uh, like, well, I don't know. Like, what What's simulationist about? I mean, people I, eventually die. I guess. Like, I mean, yeah. Like human, they breathe probably air. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you could stand and jump twenty five feet if you are trained in athletics. So yeah. And honestly, given what we saw, there's no element of a narrative currency, no nope. meta currency. The success failure is pass fail. There's no like success yeah. at a cost, success with a complication, failure, you know, success at, with failure, turn failure into success if you're willing yeah. to pay the price. The game seems very low it's narrative. Not, there's no narrative. I did not see any narrative mechanics. Yeah. Instead, the game alone on its own merits is trying to create a cinematic tactical experience right. through the application of its game system. Right. So it's basically all game. It's all basically all game. So I don't want to say it's it's not because it's not board gamey, but no. it's a little board. Like, not all games are board games. I, that's I'm just saying. But like the whole like accumulate enough points and then da 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 da. Um, Coach says at least the uh, HP matters. Unlike to my five fire lion bushi with uh, heart piercing H the HPS of course. So see, Coach, you're you're the type of <laughs> you're the type of you're the type of Legend of the Five Rings character we worry about. Right. Why are you worried about your heart piercing strike? You should be worried about your your Lord's honor and what, what quality of marriage you're going to get. <laughs> like, like, I mean, what about your duty, but also your lost love? Like, right. come on, what is this? Right. Um, have are you really playing Legend of the Five Rings if you haven't made a meditation check against your own vigilance DC to see if you'll commit seppuku because you can't deal with the shame of the failure that you just experienced? I, I say no. No, okay. I don't think so. Seriously. Um, but yeah, so um uh, pumpkin says all right who's down to play another mcdm play test i'm running <laughs> yeah and i think it, and i just wrote this in the chat but if you're a part of our discord or yeah uh, part of our patreon if you're not you obviously you should it's in the description below become a member of the patreon which lets you get access to the discord if you're not we're people are playing this right now in our discord pumpkin for sure is he just ran it last week and he's running it again this weekend uh we just played it so it is it's kind of a hot topic flavor of the month as we like to you know uh talk about on the channel but uh I feel like people well, are interested right now. They want to see what's going on with I this. Mean, the, this is different. Other, it's different. The other fact of the matter is, look, the game's going to change. I, I like that they're coming out with it in 2025. You know, there's a lot of other games that are really rushing to get to market. These people are not. <laughs> you Got to beat the beast. I could understand the desire to beat the beast. Good luck. Okay. I Matt Colville DM is not doing it. And you know what? 30,000 people said they're interested. So there's going to be people playing this game one way or the other. That being said, having played it, having read it, it, it is surprising to me that it did that well. I'm not saying it's bad. Mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. Well, I, I don't. But 4.5 million. Like, because here's the thing. Because Avatar well, the Kickstarter didn't give you the play test. So you had to be part of the Patreon to get it. I believe so, yes. Yeah, so you. if you just are like, oh, cool, new Kickstarter, you might have just backed the game going. So oh, you're a 5e cool. e player and you like me. I know, but them. I mean, but, but. But he had done videos. I know you didn't see any of them, but he had done videos that were on his public YouTube channel about the game and their ideas for it. And the whole no hitting thing was something that it, that did not that was not on the play test. That had been out in mm -hmm. public. Oh, no missing. Yeah. yeah, no missing. I'm sorry. Um, for a long time. And, you know, understanding that so many people who back this are fifth edition players. Why did this game? get them to make that leap? Well, his audience I is kind of him. built around jaded fifth edition players like if you're a 5e player and you're listening to a cobalt stream talking about the glory of 4e you're not your typical critter maybe i mean i mean obviously there's a big market for this i don't know i i don't know what the overlap is there but you know? also i mean let's let's really talk numbers here 30,000 30,000 5e players there's millions million, eight digits we're talking about like yeah. There are a lot of 5e players and a small subset, 30,000 of them, which is nothing. It's a drop in a bucket. And he's got a big following I'm, on YouTube. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not dissing him. Yeah. He's got an incredible following. And that's an incredible, as we mentioned before, Kickstarter. I'm saying in comparison. Oh, yeah. Right? Drop in the Earth's bucket. big. Earth fits in Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like the 5e machine is millions of players. 
it seems totally plausible. Thirty thousand of them might go. Eh, I'm getting a little tired of this edition. These tactics sound cool, yeah, but these and are probably also, only GMs. Pe- players don't really back the Kickstarters. I mean, the, the other side of it, of course, is that you know I'm sure the fact that you know this is coming after a year, not not exactly Wizards of the Coast best PR year of all time. Uh, no, what's these? Uh, <laughs> they've been struggle busting a little bit. <sighs> oh, did you see the the recent thing? That happened? Aren't they like like so they, defending AI art? So now or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, no. So they so an artist. I get all my news entirely from uh, RFC. Stevens. That's how no, I, no, no, I was no. gonna say. That's how not I see even it. from RFC. Just his thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ooh, there must be something crazy happening in Wizards of the Coast today. Well, long story short, they uh, Wizards of the Coast. Somebody accused an artist of of using AI, mm-hmm. and there was a big backlash. Oh, so it. this was an artist. To, He's still who was accused of using <laughs> AI and then sold it as his own? No, 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 no. no. Okay, he was accused by a kind of a bloodthirsty, you know, uh, witch hunting community of using AI, and he was like, "Here's the painting, motherfuckers. Okay, it's not AI, right? You know, it's real. It's like, you yeah." Know, and then everyone's like, "Oh, you know, wow." And then Wizards of the Coast came out and was like, "You know, like, yeah, like we defend our, you know, we have a very strict, staunch, like no, a- no AI policy, and you know, we're happy to see that our artists are holding up to this." And then, then they like did some like new promos. For like some Magic the Gathering cards, oh, and they're like super AI, and oh, everyone's like, gosh. "What about these though?" And they're like, "We'd like to issue a statement oh, uh, on, on on our AI." <laughs> it's just like, it's like, I it's, it's like they, it's like oh, they, geez, they can't run this company. <laughs> like, it's so for bad. fuck's sake! Like, uh, do they hire their executives from EA? What is this? Well, I mean, the well, most of their team is like from Microsoft and Xbox and like different game divisions. Yeah. Anyways, it's it's just like it's like it's like a hilarious like it's almost like it's a, a com- it's like a this show. is a comedy yeah it's like it's like a bad, it's hilarious like a dark sitcom yeah. you know what rights violation will Watsy do next yeah it was just it was like the timing on it could I have should been be more. careful the Pinkertons will bust down our door <laughs> yeah it, it, you know anyways um but no I mean uh, I, I'll say this I mean if you want to hear anything about with you know news and hey, going you go to, to you go to RC they're they're the best source but um and they'll probably have Derek on <laughs> I, I'm on there occasionally but uh, Pencil Mates it sounds like a board game not sure if it's a game for my table and that might be a fair statement Pencil Mage I will say yeah. this. If your game, you know, if you if you don't really get into the combat, if you don't want to have these really cool, awesome, dare I say, anime kind of feeling to your combat where your characters are these larger than life heroes doing these very Marvel. Yeah, uh, you know, I actually Marvel, think Marvel is probably a better example. I, I, you know what? Marvel probably is a better example. Yeah. You know, anime is like. Almost like a, too obs- obscure. Like, wow, that's re- not even believable. Let's put it this way. Superhero like. Let's put it this way. Because you even made a point like, is he just trying to write a superhero RPG? I like, think he's trying to write a superhero like, RPG. Like, let me yeah. let me put it this way. But as we know, and as Damien knows, all superhero <laughs> RPGs suck and don't sell. <laughs> that's right. So uh let, let let let's put it this way. If we've all we've all seen, you know, we've all seen a, a, a Marvel's, right? Captain America throws a shield, it hits a guy hard enough to hurt him. And then it bounces off of him somehow and hits a wall, but then bounces back to Captain America, right? Trigonometry. Right. <laughs> if that was a power in MCDM, okay, it would be called like shield toss oh, yeah. or something. But yeah. no, or, but it would probably call, be called in quotation marks. How did that even work? <laughs> because like it's like right. they it's like they are winking to the audience. Yeah, they're doing a lot of the wink wink. They're oh, doing yeah. a lot of wink wink to the audience. Like you know? there's nothing about that that's simulation. It reminds me of the first time I played Breath of the Wild. Anyone who's played classic Legend of Zelda, you get the boomerang, you throw the boomerang, and the boomerang comes back. Well, Breath of the Wild, it's like a boomerang. So if it hits something, it doesn't come back. Well, yeah, or like you have to actually catch it. And I was like, what the fuck? Fuck this. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this to behave like a boomerang. I wanted the the sweet boomerang. I wanted the Legend of Zelda. Where's the boomerang. returning rune? Yeah, but so, you know, again, I mean, you know, uh oh, gosh. I absolutely I'm hate telling me. you Vin's gonna like this game and he and, and he, he's hating on it so much he's gonna like it. Yeah, but he's not wrong here because <laughs> that it is terrible. <laughs> I love every time Damian, we call Damian. him out, Damien feels like he's like, he's like, I have to prove my point. He goes, he goes, I found three good super RPGs and I've read fucking all of them. Now I Damien, I believe is one, one of them tiny supers. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them is Sentinels, I think, of the multiverse, which I think, I think is actually a really that, good yeah, game. Yeah. yeah, I mean that you we reviewed did, that one. We did that one. Yeah. Well, it was a first look, but actually yeah. we did two episodes with that one. Um, because we did a character creation episode. Episode, and then we did a first look episode. That was pretty good. I mean, I will lie. I mean, I, I like that one. That was pretty good. Um, I like, but yes, no, I like Chandra. Chandra. I yeah, like yeah. that point. Yeah. He, the physics of that thing don't even make any sort of sense. And he, and right, but yeah. Mar- next scene. Yes, Mar- <laughs> yeah, Marvel is just going simulation. Kobe, yeah. you know, and they just 
Buy my tickets, please. Yeah, just you know. But but look how cool our you know he our character looks. That's what you should be yeah, focused. It's cinematic on. and heroic. Yes. Exactly, cinematic and heroic. So and occasionally there's tactics. Um, yeah. you know, so obviously we had a lot of support for this tonight. We had some incredible support from our patrons and from some new guests and new friends. So, um, you know, we we're a role playing game channel. We talk about a lot of different role playing oh, yeah. games. And you know, look, is this go is it my most favorite gaming experience of all time? No. But it felt fun and fast paced. I had fun. I had a lot of fun and playing. It, and it definitely had a vibe that felt a little bit more like some of our DTX sessions mm -hmm. or some of our BX sessions, where it was just kind of like light. fun, light rolling, fast going through it. But the characters still had that mechanical crunch that I know mm -hmm. all of you know, even you. Like if you're having a stressful day at work, when we're right, this playing is like, this would be like a fun relief for the night. This Have a like, drink, beer and pretzels. Mm -hmm. This is like the opposite of Legend of Five Rings. Well, yeah. Right? Where Legend of Five <laughs> yeah. Rings, you're like Derek, um, we had, we had to carefully schedule our L five R. You're like, let, if I had <laughs> Derek or I had a rough week at work, we don't play. If, if there was a rough week at work, I don't know if I could handle the system. I don't, we, yeah, we haven't played for like three months. So. Right, 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 right. It's a little stressful at work. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, well, thank you, Thomas, for for tuning in live, and I'm glad that you enjoyed the stream. That's really awesome. Yeah, so we are going to be wrapping up here. So, um, all right. Does so that mean there's another th hour. Th this. Uh, <laughs> and the, this oh. very expensive book is going to look great right next to my Iron Heroes <laughs> and my Thirteenth Age. Yes. So, final thoughts. Uh, we'll start I, with I, we'll start with Smith. Smith. Okay. Smith. Yeah. So, yeah, that uh, it, it it for me personally, um, I'm going to follow it. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Uh, realistically, I mean, you did uh, back it. Uh, I backed it. Yeah. Uh, pretty pretty high level. Actually, I think we all backed it. We, we did. all backed it at the same level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I only bet it really because of Flea Mortals. Yeah, we, we, yeah. I mean, that was a huge reason. Yeah. I mean, genius, right? Because that book came out right before the Kickstarter. So good. It was a great book. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. I was, you know, they're good books, but I'm not a fan of uh, uh, Strongholders. Uh, Stronghold and, of Followers and Kingdom of Kingdom, Warfare. Yeah, I own them both. Again, as, as Vin pointed out, I hate I hate the, the language of it. Uh, Flea Mortals was phenomenal. It's one of my all-time favorite books. Uh, uh, so I went into this like, yeah, you know, uh, he got someone else to write for him. That's awesome, you know. And then, you know, but uh, I'm going to follow it. You know, keep an eye on it. I'm sure we'll do more here. I'm sure the channel's going to be interested. So I will play it. it. You know, in terms of like, you know, if there was no channel or something like that. Um, as it is now, I don't. I don't think I would actually have this be a game that was in my regular mm -hmm. thing that I'd bust out. Right. right. Um, I like typically deeper games uh, with progression. You know, this is going to go to level 10. It's got kind of like a 13th age FU mix vibe to it. Those are cool, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, FU means fabulous. Fabul Ultima. Ultima. We're like Sorry. the only people that call it FU. <laughs> um, that needs to catch on. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for, for long-term gains, probably not. You know, I, I also too, like, like I, I love 4E. I don't only love the combat in 4E. I love everything else around that as well. So it's not just about, you know, looking cool. And this game is really focused on that, which is fine. Focus on that. People people like that. I, I do like the slower parts of the game too, right? Yeah. I like the other aspects of, of a traditional RPG. And uh, a lot of that's lacking here. Could be just because, you know, it, obviously it's two years it's a, away. And it's a 32-page playtest. But 100%. given what we know and the direction they're going to go in, I'm not expecting that that's going to be really what they flesh out. It's so, going to be about the class. It's going to be about the powers. So, so you would say you're right now you're pretty – you're interested but kind of meh. I'm kind of meh. Yeah, okay. But, um, but, but I don't – that's not to say it's going to be bad. It's just not really a good fit for me. Right. That is not a – that's not a that, – that is a – these are personal opinions that yeah. take into account our – Personal subjectivity. If, if I'm if I'm judging this objectively, like in terms of game design, yeah, there are a lot of really good elements that we've talked about. I'm not going to rehash them here. Every, right, scroll back and watch the, video, the last three hours. Yeah, um, that I'm like, yeah, it's good, right? Obviously, a lot of this comes from other games. That's not inherently a problem. Yep. Obviously, stealing things is good. That's how we 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 uh, evolve uh, evolve. Uh, so I'm not. I don't see that necessarily as a negative in of itself. Um, I do think some things are hacked in a little clumsy, like negotiation, mm -hmm. as we talked about, but that might get cut for all we know because it kind of mm -hmm. is weird. Uh, so there's a lot of good things in the games I like. There's some things that I'm a little like, eh, on, but again, you know, two years away, so I'm not going to be too critical of that uh, stuff there. So, like, I think objectively there's some really good things there. Uh, subjectively, like, this game, yeah, I'd probably play it like once or twice and and then look at put it on the shelf and be like, oh yeah, yeah, this is kind of cool. Kind of like what I did with Iron Heroes and 13th Age. Yeah, these are good games. So do you run a lot of 13th Age campaigns? No. No, right. No, I don't. Right. 
Bob, the ones I did run were cool or played in were cool, but that, no. that you know, versus like, hey, uh, you want to play some third edition or fourth edition? Derek could literally ask that question at I, any decade. I don't even have to ask that question. I sat down to play Dread, <laughs> and this motherfucker showed up with a third edition character, right. so it doesn't even matter. Um, right, it's true. I don't even have to ask you to play third edition, and you somehow are it's still true. playing. I'm always third ready to play. Third edition. They'll always have a version of your character made for three E. Yep. Um, yeah. So, so all right, Bob. Yeah. So I agree with the the point again. Obviously, this thing is so new, and it's hard to even put an opinion on it because it's just like a, a one level tiny little adventure we played and it's so only 30 pages but if it's only 10 levels i don't know if i'd mega campaign this you know this doesn't feel like something i'd play for like a long time but you know if you just got done playing some kind of grindy game and you want to like a oh, that's uh, a what do you call point. like a uh, it's a palate cleanser. palate cleanser yeah this feels like this a game's one a great month, palate cleanser yeah which i feel is like what we use 13th age yeah, for yeah so i feel like this is like <laughs> You know, me and my me and my buddies, we just want to like kill some stuff for a month, have a good time. I actually think this game is fun, and you can just have a lot of fun just mm. being fun. But it's not as d- deep and crunchy as some other games. Would you do. say, Bob, that this game is choosing to be fun over interesting? Yes. Yeah. I don't know I if agree. it had the interesting parts. Yes. Um, from what I could tell, but I definitely had fun playing That's with true. everyone there. And I think that if you were playing it, you 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 know, going into it, we're just gonna have a good time. We're just gonna play, have have fun. We're gonna kill some monsters. Everyone's gonna do a lot of fun stuff at the table. Everyone's gonna feel like Everyone's really gonna involved. Look cool. Everyone's gonna be busy. But like after like maybe four or five sessions, you're kind of like, okay, now I want to go back right. to their thing. So I think Pal Clinch is like a re- again, judging on just this thirty page yeah. document, that's how I see. Yeah. Yeah, I'll so wait to hold my opinion for that, another year. But no, and, that, and the reason I bring that up is because that is the that is the secret sauce. You know, we've talked about Morrow's twenty lessons, and we've talked about don't confuse interesting mm-hmm, something yeah. being interesting with something being fun, and a lot of times. I'm guilty of this. Uh, you're guilty of this. A I lot of people talking about. You don't know what you're Speed we, of factual concept. You, you want. You look at a game and you go, "I want more out of this game." And so what you do is you're you're adding complexity mm-hmm. because that's what you that's what you know. Yeah. And and it's more it's more in our nature, I think, to add than right. to subtract. And right? to be fair, like good good creation is usually about subtraction. Right. Right. right? So, but but our but most people's solution is to just add. Right. You add a bunch of complexity and what you end up doing is you end up making your game more interesting, but you don't necessarily make it more fun. Right. But there's a hidden rub to that that Morrow did not talk about, which is kind of getting to what your point was and what your point is. Yes, fun. Do not confuse interesting with fun. Just cuz something's interesting doesn't mean it's fun and fun is what a purpose of a game is. That is a given. But when you're talking about something like an RPG, especially, there is this idea of longevity. Yes. And things that are fun but not interesting seldom stay fun for long. That's right. And there are yes. plenty of games, especially like complex games, role playing games, board games, video games, that are actually not fun in the beginning because they're too complex. Mm. The game is one that rewards you for spending the time and investing, if you will, the study. Mm. It's like it. It has, it, it's a sweeter prize, but you kind of have to earn it. Right. I, I mean, really, what we're talking about here is the difference between learn how to play the piano and getting a hand job. Well, I don't even understand how that is irrelevant at all. <laughs> we're not. Um, well, getting a hand job's that, easy, and it's what, over. And if you keep getting a hand from, job, it hurts. Yeah, where's the mute I got it. Where's the mute button? What's um, that thing from? Uh, no, no one's Billy, watching at this Billy point. Billy Madison. We we're three hours in. We have two hundred. Two hundred fifty people. Two hundred ten. Two hundred ten are watching right now. But um, well, what's the one from Billy it's, Madison? Where it's like, like the, piano. That, that argument made no sense. Oh and yes. <laughs> uh, at no point during your rambling thing yeah. did, that, did anything come close to a rational thought. I awarded you no points. And leave a comment, chef. That made sense. If you know, you know. Okay. See, okay. Steve's like, hello. Um, <laughs> Don Pogi says, no, 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 I get the analogy. Um, there we go. Gonza says, if, if you watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia, you, then you'll get this. She's just mashing it at this point. She's just mashing it. Um, so anyways, before we got sidetracked by that, um, you're, you're getting banished to Paragon. Um, so for me, this game is definitely fun. Yes. And I like that it's 10 levels for the same reason I like 13th Age sure. for being 10 levels. I like that this game to me feels like I'm sitting down for an exciting uh, you know, Marvel mini series. It's not 17 seasons in a movie. Right. It's not 17 seasons of 22 episodes a piece, right? It's it's eight episodes, right? With a big, with an extended yeah, no. opening uh, one. And- I get on weird. I mean, I read Wheel of Time once a year. <laughs> right. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. yeah and no, read, not audio. It takes me like a few years, a, f- a year to get through like one or two books. Yeah. So 
I personally think that that is for this style of game, right? I don't want to see Lord of the Rings or the Avengers go one to 20 or one to 30. That's that, that's that, that style of game for that type of story to me is, is not one that I want to do. Oh yeah. To be, I'm not suggesting this game goes to 20. Right. <laughs> so that being said, I think the game feels very fun. And as again, someone on this channel who rails a lot about some of these issues, MCDM RPG, in my opinion, is fixing them. They are eliminating, and we have a video. It's one of our most popular videos on this channel called Missing is Not Fun. Yeah. It's literally called that, and it talks about this, you know, a lot of people assume, they go, oh, you just want players to have everything. Kind of. I mean, I want there to be a challenge of the game, but I never want them to feel like their time here was wasted. It's not that you don't want them to have everything. You don't want them to have nothing. <laughs> that's that's very well said. Yes. Yeah, I think that's actually a good point. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Because and, missing sucks. That's the nothing. Right. Exactly. It's not like I'm going to give you the whole world. It's just like, I don't, just don't want you to have nothing. One of the reasons I why I really <laughs> love Powered by the Apocalypse is because it is literally not possible in that to game have to have nothing happen. Yeah, I mean, that's why I like PBT. You know, and as I mean, even it. as a player... Like, yeah, you want to hit, you want to feel awesome, but like missing still is exciting. Right. And and if and to be clear, there are a lot of people who play Power by the Apocalypse and they'll attempt to do something cool. They'll roll low. The GM will then use that as a move to make the lives of the party and everything more, in, uh, more, more shitty, but more interesting. Yeah. You know? yes. And a lot of players hate that because know. they feel like they were punished for taking an action. That is that I'm not I'm not denying that that is their viewpoint and that that is a valid viewpoint. Sure. My point is you will never enjoy Powered by the Apocalypse unless you have an attitude like yours mm -hmm. where you go, man, something interesting yeah. is about to happen. Oh, boy. I can't wait to see what – it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, hey, if my character gets everything he ever wanted, that's going to be awesome and fun for me. PBTA, or when my, you are hitting and critting – and by the way, like, like this is no more noticeable than it is in uh, uh, Iron Sworn. Right, because it's easy to start like like chaining victories in Iron Sworn. When you get to a point where you're just smoking PBTA, the game is over. Same thing with uh, uh, Fortune and Dark games. Sure, right. Like when you're just hitting, hitting, critting, 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 and you're not getting complications, it becomes literally in our case a milk run. Like right. like like, like yeah, there's, there's nothing to do. You're like nothing, okay, the GM yeah. can't make moves. Right. So, so the long and the short of it is. Um, this is a game to me that seems like it is trying to create a fun and engaging experience based around these pillars of combat, uh, of tactical cinematic combat, yep. fantasy heroism. That being said, it remains to be seen how interesting that will be in the long run. Yeah. Because I could see it getting kind of stale and I could see that characters kind of end up feeling like a lot of the rounds feel the same. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much now. Get super early play. Super test. early. So from that perspective, I will say this: I felt like the no missing was. And again, I know that there are other games that have done this, like Into the Odd and stuff. But for me, I hadn't played those games. Uh, as a game master, I thought it was awesome. I liked it. Um, I didn't I, think I would, but I thought it was. I thought it was really awesome. Nice. If anything, what I would prefer of course, because it's me, is that the monster did static damage, 15. Oh, you didn't have to roll. And that you, the player yeah, it's rolled. Yeah, didn't do that because that's how it is in uh, 13th Age, and minions do static damage in 4E. Yeah, so I would rather you roll your defense. Uh, well, I guess because you need the bane. Because to be clear, yeah. I don't care if you, the player, reduce my monster's damage to zero. Sure. Unless it's the big villain guy, and it happens all the time. But in that case, the villain should be designed in such a way that the damage can't be reduced right, to zero. Right. The problem with the damage reduced to zero is that it, you're relying on an attack roll normally, yeah, and yeah. That, that by definition is zero if they miss. Yeah. So what you get then is a situation where the players can feel really, really awesome and really cool. Now, we get that a little bit with the parry and the flight yeah. dodge, and I really like how cool You like that, that though, because that's the player taking agency. I like the player taking agency. Yeah. My whole thing is I just don't like rolling dice. <laughs> sure. Um, hey, we got another one from Self Confessed Senate. It says, Oh man, Bob's on book 10. Congrats. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Up, uphill time. Yeah. Um, I believe. I thought I just read nine last. Uh, but I haven't read a, new, a book in a while. Uh, what? Eight's Path of Daggers, nine's Winner's Heart, ten is. Oh, maybe I'm a nine then. Am I right? No, I seven's know Crown of Swords. I, seven's Crown of Swords, eight Path of Daggers. Eight is Path of Daggers, nine is Winner's Heart. I definitely passed Path of Daggers. Winter ten is Knife I've, of Dreams. What's the cover of the book? They don't look the same as what you're All talking right. about. Who's yet? the POV character? Which are the three boys? I, I I don't remember. 
Um, I thought ten was nice. Right, right now, I'm reading just Christ. Books. Bob. I'm reading War, War, I'm reading Warhammer. So <laughs> I'm reading Kyphus, of, Kyphus Kane is dealing the damage. I'm reading right Wheel now. of I'm reading Wheel of Time. I'm also reading two other books. <laughs> He's trying to get through the 40K series real quick. Yeah. There's only like 700 novels left Ugh, to go. There's so much Kyphus Kane. Uh, book 10 is Crossroads of Twilight. Ah, okay. Mm, I, I don't for, know if I've I forgot about that, that book. I don't remember what happens in that book. Jesus Christ. Uh, 9, 10, and 11 are kind of all meshed together for me. Perrin rescues fail, kidnapped by the Shido. Uh, the alliance with the Sean okay. Chan. Yeah. Matt continues to try to escape Sean Chan while courting Tuan. Nope, Path of, Path of Daggers is the last one I read. Okay, well, that one. Okay. okay, well, you are in what I like to call the rough era. Oh, great. Because yeah. to me, uh, uh, book Path of Daggers and Winter's Heart are horrible. Path of Everest. Daggers was not exactly like. Bring me to no, book I, the I, next book. Those ones killed me. I I, yeah. I I got stuck on those books for years. Yeah. I appreciated them more on on follow up rereads. Uh, mostly because there is an arc in real time that I absolutely can't stand that comes after all that, mm. which kind of overshadows those books. Yeah. I cannot stand the succession arc. Oh, sure. Because it is the worst fucking thing ever that is completely fucking pointless. <laughs> you know what it is? It's it's season eight of Game oh, of Thrones. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Why the fuck do we care about this? I mean, spoilers for real time. So, well, uh, that, 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 that's reasonable. We shouldn't probably give spoilers, though. Well, it's I, a new show. The town where the person who wishes to rule gets destroyed because the world is ending. Right. Tarman it's, guided, which you should right. know if you've read it, the first It's one book. of those things where it's like people are like squabbling over border disputes and yes. you're like, the dark one is coming. Right. Which part of this yeah. do you not right. understand? Right. You know. Yes. Um, so. All right. All right. So, uh, so yeah. So my thought is, I'm interested, and yep. you all are obviously very interested. I'm going to continue. I'm a member of the Matt Colville Patreon. I'm going to continue to get playtest documents. As I get playtest documents, I'm probably going to play them with these guys. I'm probably going to play some with uh, my patrons as yep. they come out, um, because I do think that there's some really interesting mechanics here, and um, you know, I like having different tools in my RPG toolbox. Yep. And I could see this being good for sort of like a a fun. You know, more action hero, rompy kind yeah, of. It could game. be a fun con game. It's pretty yeah. quick if you had the pre-mates. Yeah, and and also too, there's a lot of ideas here mm -hmm. that I have talked about and wanted about for a long time. Sure, I love the idea of yeah, the, tactical, this for a while. the tactical yeah. resources because yeah. it solves a lot of my tension issues. The it remains to be seen is does it end up turning into a rotation? Yeah. Does it end up turning into the you do the thing that builds up the thing and then you you cash them in? You know, you guys do are you, very excited do about you this. Sinister strike, sinister strike, yeah, sinister strike. You know, backstab or whatever it's called. I, I'm not trying to yuck anyone's yum. It was not bad by any means. But when I'm playing this, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm doing my rotation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, where the game may struggle, and you talked about this with Final Fantasy 14, mm -hmm. you want to do your rotation. Mm -hmm. But there are things that I am doing. Right. Or that the encounter is doing. That's going to that be the keep test. you from doing your rotation. Right. Because you're right. If given the choice, why wouldn't I just do the most optimal line that's going to increase my odds of success the right. most oh i gotta go deal with this issue over here that involves me using a power or an ability that isn't part of my core rotation yeah. then that is an interesting check this challenge. is where the game's really gonna have to show that yeah. it does in fact have tactical uh meat to it because the enemies really gotta push back on heroes it's a level one adventure it's going to yeah. be easy we know that yeah, yeah i'm interested to see what you know the level seems like six is the beginning of high level play in this that's when you get your impact die and all that for uh skills uh, I'm interested to see what that last chunk of the game is going to be like because um, the the monsters really need to push back on the PCs. They're very powerful. Now, we know – we didn't see a lot in our game, but we know uh, uh, Kova really, really loves pushing, pulling slides, maneuvers. That could be very interesting to mix it up, right? If Derek can push me out of a position where I can't do my cool thing, I can't do my rotation, I can't build up my my tokens – that's going to be interesting gameplay, right? Yeah. So well, he's I, got a lot of pressure to get the monsters right because if the monsters can't match the PCs, and yeah, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of rules in the book about pushing, pulling, sliding. There's a lot and collisions. Yeah, he's really big into the so, collisions. So waiting, yeah, waiting to see those pop up a little bit more. Yeah. Um. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for this incredible stream. Uh, happy to have gone over three hours. So hopefully you guys enjoyed all of this. Um. I'm still working on a Candela Obscura review. I bought the pdf but it was expensive pdf it's like 30 bucks but we're gonna uh, hopefully uh take a look at it um it's probably not gonna be a review because i don't think we're gonna get 
chance to play Candela Obscura, but I do have a lot of experience with Blades in the Dark and um, and Forge in the Dark games. So I, I think I'll be able to kind of at least give a really solid impression. So that video is coming soon. Uh, we, of course, go live every Tuesday and Thursday, sometimes Sunday. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell because you never know when we're going to go. We might throw in a bonus stream. And if you're interested in some of our bonus content videos, some of our exclusive access to things like our Patreon Discord or certain uh, community games that we run, merch, all sorts of fun stuff, then check out our uh, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash nice last call to quote Colville. There's a link in the doobly doobling below, which I actually think he took from uh, 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 another YouTuber, uh, uh, Casey ne Neistat, I think. But anyways, uh, check it out. Patreon.com slash nice last call. We have a couple different tiers at different options for all price ranges. If you want to come and hang out with us and talk games, maybe play some games, it would be even better. So um, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Smith. And uh, thanks you to all of you. We'll see you next time on Nights of Last Call. Bye.